Um, can I get a motion to open the meeting? So, so moved. moved. Second. <laughs> Ferris. <coughs> Fourth. All right, let's stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. So before we um, jump into the agenda, first of all, welcome everybody um, to tonight's business meeting. Um, the format for this evening is a little bit different than we have traditionally done. Normally we have exec at the beginning of the meeting, and tonight we're trying something a little different. We're going to have exec at the end of the meeting. Um, there's a, I've gotten some questions about that from the public as well as board members, so I just wanted to um, share with everybody my thinking behind that change, and then we'll see how it goes tonight, and then at the end of the meeting when we have um, other items for discussion, if anybody like to weigh in and how they think that went, that would be the time to do that. Um, the thinking was that um, with if we have a, um, the spirit of open meetings law is that we do as much in public as we can, and um, so that might mean that we have some more authentic discussion and questions during the approval part of the agenda and if needs be we may need to go into exec in the middle of the meeting um, if something comes up that we find that we need to discuss in exec. I think the spirit of open meetings law is we do as much as we can in public um, and the questions that board members have on the agenda um, can be addressed in public as opposed to in the exec session ahead of time. So um, that's the thinking. Um, the second motivation behind it was that Maybe we could start meetings a little bit earlier, get out a little earlier, and if we need to have an executive session, it would be the board that stays late and not the administration that stays late. So that was the second thing. So um, with that, uh, we're going to move right into public input one. Is there anybody that would like to speak at public input one? So we will move into the um, superintendent's report. Um, January has promised to help me with uh, Robert's rules um, because there might be more discussion during the agenda. I'm going to do my best to um, adhere to the board operating procedures. So as we go through the superintendent's report, I'm going to ask that um, those that are presenting get to get through their whole agenda and then we'll do questions afterwards. So we'll save all our questions for the end. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. All right. So I'm going to start with um, uh, Principal Nichols. Do you want to go ahead up to the podium? Where is the podium? It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, we've changed our microphone system. We now have a, um, a, a microphone that just captures the whole room. Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. Um, it's nice to start on time, so I apologize for being late. Uh, Okay, I'm going to review some past events and then go over some next time events. Uh, that picture there is, uh, is the moving up ceremony, which is when our eighth graders at the end of the year celebrate uh, the conclusion of middle school. And that event was organized by Miss uh, Carriero, is that how you pronounce it? Miss Carriero. Uh, graduation, last Saturday, I believe in June, the weather cooperated. We had a wonderful guest speaker. Those are two of our graduates. That is a uh, salutatorian, Ella Parker, who's headed to UC Berkeley in September. She's excited for that. This is the students uh, running up the hill at the end of um, graduation where they meet at the flagpole, wait for everybody, and toss their hats. Uh, this summer, um, through the roof <coughs> and trust, there have been a series of workshops that have been organized by Mr. Solo, the 
various instructors coming in uh, in their areas of expertise, and those uh, workshops have been very well attended. I've popped in a few times, and the students seem to be engaged, and the teachers seem to be energized. Uh, upcoming middle school, high school events, uh, sixth grade orientation, uh, the 22nd, senior portraits, the PTSA takes care of that. And this motto is coming in the 28th and the 29th. And uh, th those two days are divided into two components. One is uh, on day one from 8 to 12 is to fill out roughly 85% of the common app. Uh, the common application is accepted by the majority of colleges that our students apply to. Uh, big picture, it covers uh, most of the information that students are required to submit. And many more selective colleges will have supplementary uh, information that they seek, but the majority of it is contained in the Common App. So that first day, students will complete most of the Common App. The second day, on 12 to 2, uh, they will receive uh, tutorial assistance uh, writing their um, essay. On the Common Application, they have six writing prompts, and you're able to choose one of them. Uh, so hopefully at the end of day two, students will have the majority of that uh, draft completed. 6th of September is the first day of school. Uh, the 7th is college application night, uh, continuation of the efforts uh, put forth by Ms. Motto on the 28th and 29th of August. And our first conversation with administrators is scheduled for the 15th at 8 a.m. in the Pearson Guidance Conference Room. This is a, a uh, quick overview of what I just talked about, the breakdown of the two days. You'll see at the top, it talks about the common app and the bottom more about the essay. Uh, Mr. Malone. Sure. Pertaining to Robert's rules, did you want to do it at the end or at the end of each speaker's presentation? Um, we'll do it at the end of each speaker. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Nichols? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We just concluded today um, our summer program. Once again, a, a great success for those students that attended um, children entering grades one through six. Um, a lot of great instruction in reading, writing, and mathematics. And I'm going to just bump ahead to some of the pictures that um, thank you to Ms. Reynoso and the teachers for organizing. In addition to the um, remedial work that goes on in the classrooms, the students have some great opportunities um, to extend the learning through some field trips here in our community, walking field trips or using our bus fleet. One of the classes um, had a chance to go down to Paid Restaurant and learn a little more um, about the aquaponics system that they have there growing some of the fruits. The kids seem to love that. We're very lucky to have such a strong relationship with John and Maine, and each year the students that attend the summer program we make sure that they visit the, the beautiful space down at John Germain and ensure that they have their own library cards. It's a great way to just introduce them if they have friends up to that wonderful space. Thanks to Breakwater Yacht Club, one of the classes was reading about a um, boat that had been shipwrecked and the terminology around sailing and um, boats and all the different parts of the boat and they actually had an opportunity to go and staff down there was just very welcoming, took them around and, and did some great explanation. And, uh, they loved it. You can see from their faces in those pictures. Too bad they didn't get on that big one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a nice, that's a nice one. Of course, we, we all love Commodore. We know um, things are changing a little bit for them. But Frankie was kind enough to help the students extend some of their learning about fractions through uh, some pizza tossing and pizza making. It's a shot of our, our garden out back, which is always a hit with the kids. And then I'll just zoom back to our upcoming events. Our orientation, I think as Mr. Nichols noted, is the 21st and 22nd for new staff members. And then we get things going on the 6th. That's the first day for students K through 5. And it also uh, provides an opportunity for the students entering our pre-K to do a little meet and greet where 
students and their parents get a chance to meet with the, the teachers and visit the classrooms because their first day is actually the, the Thursday, the 7th. The following Friday, we do our annual back to school picnic. And then the 28th of September, which we'll, we'll be here before we know it, that'll be curriculum night where the classroom teachers and all the special area teachers meet with families and explain all the learning that will go on throughout the year. Yeah, I think I get any questions or are you going to do? I think I get to be, um, we have oh. two uh, staff members. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Um, well, this actually pertains to both both principals, which is why I wanted to wait till they both went. Sure. What is enrollment? I know it's a little bit early because sometimes you get last minute students, but how does enrollment look um, compared to previous years? Larger, smaller? Which, uh, any uh, shifts that any sh enrollment shifts in any particular grade that the, you see? At the elementary K to five, fairly steady. Mm -hmm. um, pre K is actually up a bit. Right. And, um, we're looking forward to opening up an additional section. Oh, so In the middle school, high school, the overall enrollment is pretty flat in and around 520. Um, there are some larger uh, cohort uh, cohort groups at the middle level coming through. So mm -hmm. you have some smaller high school classes this year and some larger middle school classes. The way it works, though, is that uh, it falls within the realm of reasonableness for four sections. Good. So we haven't really tipped the 80 number yet. So, so our current staffing plan is can address the student population we have coming in. Yes, with the exception of uh, we had one one new position in uh, English as a new language. But mm -hmm. yes. Um, Mr. Malone, do you yes. have, happen to have the times for the back to school picnic curriculum night? Do you happen to know those? Um, curriculum night will be seven. Okay. But back back to school picnic will be um, within the lunch lunch hour framework. So. Figure on um, 11:30 to one. No, is that something time. where the public comes in, or is that just for the kids? The families are invited to that, and then um, about 1:30 we have some entertainment coming. Okay. And, um, we hooked up with the hip pickles this year. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be there. I just Friday wanted afternoon. to ask real quick: of course. Is Pizza Tuesday still going to be going on? Actually, um, I had a conversation with Frankie the other day. Um, we're working on. We're working on. Maybe a, maybe a bit delayed with the changes, but we're going to have it. Sushi Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do kindergarten students go to morning program on the first day? We typically wait about a week, so no. Kindergarten students do not for the first few days. But they go to school on September 6th. They go to school on September 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's a shortened day for kindergarten. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Moss? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is great. You need I, I can do it. You can leave it right on there. Leave it on there? Yeah, because sure. I'm going to have you two join us in a moment okay. for a little bit more. Sure. Um, Mr. Bramoff and Mr. Fisher are both away on vacation, so I'll be playing their role. Um, <laughs> And so they have a scheduled events. The uh, family ID registration for fall sports is open. Um, sign ups are required before the season begins. The first day of JV and varsity football at Southampton is on the 14th. On the 18th, the school physicals tentatively from 1.30 to 3.30, um, depending on the number that need to be um, uh, handled. Um, the 21st is the first day of JV and varsity fall sports. Um, the the 6th of September is the first day for fall middle school sports and as well as the fall middle school parent players coaches meeting at 5 o'clock in the high school library. After that meeting they break up and uh, parents have their personal time with their coaches as well. On the 7th uh, is the fall varsity, JV varsity sports parents meeting. And again, they, um, they have an overall meeting where they go through things like concussion policy, and then they break up and meet with individual um, uh, sports. And on the 13th and 14th of October, we're looking forward to homecoming week that week. More details will follow on that. Can I ask a question yep. about one of the dates? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, don't think no. it was a sports question, but I can answer it. I may not know the answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is this the end of the uh, Yeah, that's the, yep. that's the end. Well, yeah. It's the end of sports. Mm -hmm. um, the 21st, what is the communication method between the coach and the player about when and where the um, preseason practices are? 
Is that direct from the coach to the player? Is it posted on the website? Because in the past it's been somewhat inconsistent and has caused some confusion, so that's why I'm asking now. I don't, I don't know the okay. answer. I, I can tell you that the communication in my house has been coach direct to player. Mm -hmm. But that's only one sport. My, my suggestion is then, if possible, if they can also be posted on the website. Because sometimes, particularly you're dealing, you know, you're dealing with many students who don't drive and aren't always organized. And parents have to arrange their schedules because some sports have morning and evening, so twice a day. So if, you know, if it can be as transparent and communicated as possible, I think that's helpful. Because right. most coaches aren't communicating to a parent, just the, just the player. Can, can I ask a quick question also about this slide? And I realize, Kay, you might not know the answer, but I'm, I'm hearing confusion in the community about it. Mm -hmm. um, sports physicals, are those separate and required over and above the physical that a student might have with their own pediatrician? Sports physicals are very specific. They're so it's over and above. So even though they've had a, phys a physical with their pediatrician, they've handed the paperwork, they still need to go for a sports physical, correct? Yeah, unless, it, unless it meets that threshold. And so the safest thing to do is to go for the sports physical. Okay. Uh, my experience has been different. Okay. Mine was that if they had already had a recent physical from their doctor, if, the, if that office, if you have to give them several days, but if you email the paperwork to that doctor's office, They'll fill it out, get it back, and you can submit it. So you wouldn't need necessarily sec a separate checkup if they've just two months ago had a. Right, and that's exactly the confusion I'm hearing, right. whether it's separate or not. Okay. Right. So I can have a fair. <coughs> so that's what I've yeah, done. I think people are unclear. I think it's also <coughs> dependent on the doctor you have. Some yeah. doctors will do it, and some doctors won't. It's, so, it, it's so a I'm specific gonna, form. So if, if that helps, it, it's a specific form that you obtain from Family ID. It's posted. And all kids that are playing sports have to register on Family ID. You can download mm -hmm. it. And if your doctor will fill it out for you, you're fine. If not, and you have a physical, and you go to Margaret Comer, the nurse, she will give you the form, and she can do it. Thank you. Um, these are just some <coughs> pictures of the ongoing progress. Um, the field, the grass field, is, is on schedule um, and on time. And if you look, the sidewalks have been added, um, the steps have been added for um, safety, all the cement work has been done, and it's grade ready for the spot to go in. So that's on time. Um, we had uh, Eric and Jennifer organized for all of our district-wide custodial staff, DASA training, sexual harassment training, I don't need to read through all this, but it was a very comprehensive um, training. Again, just trying to be proactive and um, have our staff understand um, their role, for instance, for incident handling. Because they're the one that usually is there if somebody's taken a fall. Also ways to prevent incidents um, um, and accidents from happening around the district and also doing their mandated um, training that's necessary. And it was also a really great bonding day for our custodial staff who the night often don't see the day. The people that are in the elementary never see the people in Pearson, so it was a great day to bring them all together. Um, the summer tasks, um, Mr. Fisher has brought any in a team. Any questions about oh, facilities? Sure, yeah. No, yeah. Anybody have any questions about facilities? Yep. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, uh, Mr. Fisher has had a team of uh, students that have come, and it gives them a wonderful work experience, um, and they, uh, which were board approved, and they have been working very hard. Um, this year, we're going to have Google Chromes that are going to be class ready for every class uh, district wide, and so that's been a tremendous amount of work um, that the students and our tech team has put together. And they will also have charging stations in every single room. Um, so that's been some of the work that they've done um, this summer, along with just all the upgrades. Um, so I think that we've really done a steep climb um, across the district in where we are now, um, as far as where we were a few years ago. And I really congratulate the board on their progressive thinking and supporting um, Mr. Fisher and his team on the work that they've done. Um, they've also done upgrades to the art so that the art lab computers can do the work that we've been so um, interested in having them do, which is the um, wider depth of the work that we see happening in our classes. Um, summer task refurbishing the uh, printers, the greater access, we're having centralized printers as well, new data tech uh, for the auditorium, 
to for more remote control access and replacing out of date smart boards. Um, there's some more cost effectiveness to this as well because we find that some of the smart boards, um, when you have to replace something like um, a, 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 a light bulb, hundreds of dollars. So we're trying to go with a much more cost effective model, yet providing that same kind of display and interactiveness that the children and teachers have become used to. Um, if I can have Mr. Um, Malone and we're talking about later starts. So the later start implementation started. We e-blasted out to our school community, our staff, and all our parents um, that Pearson will be starting uh, 15 minutes later. Sag Harbor Elementary will be starting five minutes later. And all this went out to our community. Um, I only had two phone calls from parents asking uh, questions. I think the guidance was fairly clear to them. And some of the questions that we had prior to sending out the email was the transition time and the academic support. So do you want to talk about this slide, about the changes that you've made to meet that? Sure. Um, so the end of the day now, I believe, is uh, 7.51. And um, part of the concern with um, the later start was that students who are in shared sports would miss out on a significant part of academic support. So we put our heads together and thought, what could we do a short term, immediate, that would um, limit the amount of time that students would miss. And one of the things that we decided to do was to decrease the amount of time that students would spend in transition at the end of the day. So students who play a shared sport now, by season, the seasons being fall, winter, and spring, will be assigned a locker uh, in the wing that's adjacent to the high school gym. So there are some classrooms there. So those students will be released from academic support at 2.42, which is nine minutes prior to 2.51. Uh, they will have five minutes to get to their locker, their sports locker, gather their belongings, and board the bus, which we think is a reasonable um, task for them to accomplish. If they get on the bus at 2.47, uh, Mr. Bramloff assures me after talking to the, the bus personnel that they will arrive to East Hampton at 3 p.m. the same time they did last year. So the net loss for these students would be nine minutes out of a 34 minute period. Uh, I will say that academic support, the, the most productive time, is the first 65 to 75% of the period. Um, the least productive time is the last 35 to 20 or 25 to 35 percent. So uh, I think this was a good solution. Can I just say thank you so much? I, I just, from me, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate that you guys found solutions here and figured this out and that kids will be getting to their practices on time. And I know it's a lot of competing pressures, but um, I'm eager to see what happens in terms of how kids are feeling and what we're seeing in terms of <coughs> attendance and tardiness and how kids feel in the first period of the day and how that goes. So, thank you. Thanks. Sorry, do we have any shared sports with Southampton? We do. Um, so, what does that schedule look like? Their schedule will, they will still arrive late because of a greater. Um, transportation time, specifically in the fall. Okay. Uh, in the spring, they will not arrive late because Southampton has agreed to start their lacrosse time later. So the only sport that they'll be late to in the fall will be football. And uh, they will be late next year the same amount of time they were late during the 16-17 school year because we'll be leaving at, at 2.47, which is a similar time. Okay. So no change to what happened before. Right. Right. Okay. That's great. Any other <coughs> questions on that? No question, but a comment. The state of California in their Senate, they're introducing a bill to have all of their public schools in the state start no later, excuse me, no earlier than 8.30. So we'll see if that passes, but it's kind of interesting as well. Through high school. Mm -hmm. So the second, uh, uh, I guess, bullet on that slide is that because of the later start time, we just wanted to remind parents that the building uh, specifically, the cafeteria will be open uh, at 7.15, which is a full, what is that, 36 minutes uh, prior to 7.51. So for those parents who have students or children that they need to drop off, uh, they can go to the cafeteria. We'll have personnel there. 
uh, and that part of the building will be the only accessible part of the building until the buses arrive, which is usually, uh, in this instance, would be probably about uh, between 2.37 and 2.42. And can I say, I heard from two different parents um, when the word was getting out about this, that a uh, big thank you, how much they appreciated this to accommodate their work schedules. So again, bravo to you guys for figuring out a solution here. Yep. So very excited to see some of these obstacles get sorted out and see how it goes. It, in the presentation, I didn't see anything about the additional cost of that first year. Is that, had that been something that had been spent previously or is this a new additional cost? So it's, uh, it, it was budgeted in past years, so uh, this past year the cafeteria was open at 7 a.m. So it's, it's, we've already been spending the money every year? Correct. Excellent, so no additional cost. That's yeah. correct. I have a question about um, assessment tools. Is there any sort of assessment analysis that's already in place so we can track the um, later start times with how students are performing? I think, well, well, there's a couple of different vantage points we can look at. One of them that Susan mentioned is attendance. attendance. So we certainly have uh, data from previous years on daily attendance, but, but also period attendance, attendance by the nine periods in the day. Uh, another analysis would be to look at um, course grades by period in terms of how students are performing period one, two, three, four, and obviously uh, reference discipline to discipline if you can. So if we're looking at math during period one, let's try to look at math this year during period one when uh, that's the case. So we'll be doing that. Okay. And I think we'll be presenting periodically to the board on um, our findings, knowing though that big picture, you really need to take a multi-year view on the impact, not a multi-month view. I can't imagine 15 minutes is going to do anything to anybody's grades. But that was a statement. 15 minutes would have made a world of difference in front of my, in some of my early morning classes for me personally. I know. 15 minutes, yeah. There, there are studies for that show that yes. in other school districts, just a 15 minute shift has made some remarkable differences. So, I and remember that this is not just 15, this is 15, 15 minutes. minutes. This is 15 minutes plus 10 minutes from before. So we're moving in the right direction. That's five minutes. Any yeah. other questions? <laughs> Anything else? All right, thank you. Well, we did have um, related costs um, which I just wanted to review for transparency. Um, when we, in June, we had additional bus runs that were added due to newly scheduled runs for occupational education, private schools, and special education. Some folks don't realize that if we have children attending private schools, we need to, we need to pay for those bus runs um, if they're within a certain mileage. We also had children that had, um, students that had signed up for occupational education and CSE meetings that were still ongoing <coughs> where there were placements made for special education. So those additional ru bus runs, because of, there's a compression now in, in, the, um, in the, um, the time period, did result in um, an added cost where we have to um, uh, have some of our bus runs now purchased out. So that's at maximum, and of course we, Jennifer and I are always conservative when we put these costs in, the maximum that would be would be 200000 because we're, again, we're always conservative on our costs. So we'll see how that goes, but we, I did want to share that with the board publicly, that we, and we'll, we'll monitor that very closely and give the board our reports as we move forward, because students can sometimes decide not to go to private school, they can decide not to go to occupational education, the special education uh, shift, but that was, that was since your last meeting that we, we did see those changes, so I wanted to keep that transparent for the board. But can I ask a question about sure. that? So my impression when we received this information, I appreciate you bringing it up uh, publicly, is was that these would have happened anyway. So I'm unclear about how much this is responsible for the shift. It sounded like these were additional runs having nothing to do with the later start. It, it's because the, there's a compression in the time in how fast we turn these around. So, and, and Maud is really, um, Maud Stevens is our head of bus and she's really our, um, our expert when it comes to this, so I take her recommendations. Um, so in her recommendations, she said we would have to add contracted out bus runs to make that shift, to make that work. Um, and again, we'll have to monitor to see if that's really the case. And so if we're going to send our buses for the long runs, that's, that's what we want to do. They're, they're going to be out 
running long runs. We want our people out doing the long runs. So it's the, we want our people on the long runs because that's, that's conservative cost-wise. And um, so we contract out for the shorter runs if, we're gonna, if, we're gonna, if we have to contract out at all. So that's number one of it. Number two is that um, when she when she realized this, this the shorter time period, we now have to do it faster to turn around. That this this would be the case that she would have, there would be this, these additional added added runs. Again, we have to monitor it with the start of the school year. Mm -hmm. It may not it may not be as you know as high a number, but again, we wanted to be conservative. Okay. In our it, thoughts. Did everybody see that article? I think it was in Boston. Uh, a, a school district that um, was trying to figure out their buses and uh, put out a competition to anybody who could figure out a better way to do it. And some MIT students used some mathematical formulas and figured out something that's now going to be saving the school district like $5 million in transportation costs. Like I think the kids should walk this way, but well, get up a little early. Uh, they walked. Well, one of the things we have before the board is, to, um, is we have t uh, three, is it three, Jennifer, three RFPs for um, uh, consultants, which has been the recommendation of our administrators, is to have some have an expert come in. And I've worked with a number of them when I worked with BOCES. And they come in and not only look at our school district, but they will look at the whole East End and make recommendations for us on, again, one of the places where we've saved the greatest costs over the last three years is what parents do all the time, is we, we carpool. And so having them look at this, we may wind up in the long run capturing savings by having these um, consultants come in, transportation consultants. So that was shared with the board, and that's something I, I would heartily recommend you move forward with is just what you're talking about. It's yeah, they, their competition, I think, was free. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if they I don't think we have that uh, luxury, but I would love it if they would. Go ahead, Chris, because then I have a question. All right. I have a qu I'm sorry, I did not understand your explanation. So I'm going to ask a question a different way because I, I apologize. I'm just, and today maybe I'm not getting it. Um, you know, all through last year, this particular option that was just, you know, we, that we surveyed, we surveyed saying no additional transportation costs. In June, we sat here before we voted as a board. And that slide, because I pulled out the presentation just to revisit, I'm like, am I remembering correctly? And it did say no additional trans <coughs> transportation costs. So when I see this, to me, maybe it's optics, but it seems like it's not the later start time that's causing the additional cost. It's this other stuff that we didn't foresee and budget for. So I'm concerned that we're labeling it as a later start time cost when it, there's only an additional cost because of this other stuff that was added afterward. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's kind of why I'm confused about how I'm hearing the explanation. Can I just... Um Go ahead, Jim. What happened was, is back in March and April, when we didn't have those additional runs, um, we were we did have a little bit of a cushion, and we did have um, a little leeway in our schedule to work around things, and to and address the AM and the PM runs in house. You can see now we still can address the AM runs. All the AM runs are fine; they're going to be done in house. But it's all the PM runs that we're going to have to contract out, just because of all of these new routes came in the picture which now took up that little bit of cushion that we had that we were going to spread ourselves thin to try and get those both AM and PM. So they're not necessarily um, interchangeable, but it is a matter of, you know, sitting down, now having all of the um, updated information, now knowing exactly who we're transporting, when and where, and this is the result of that. And we sometimes never know up until the last minute who we're going to be transporting when and where because um, this, all of this has so many extenuating circumstances. It remains fluid throughout the whole year. We never know if we have anyone new coming in for a private run, special ed um, needs, uh, tech, you know, uh, career technology needs. So this, back in March and April, I think when we said that it wouldn't cost any additional money back then, it really didn't. But now that we have all the facts and we know what we're doing, we know we're not going to be able to meet those PM runs. Right. But that, that makes sense. It was just it was it's just in June. The presentation was in June, right before we voted. So that was the kind of the surprise that it was the summer we did. You know, we said let's move forward, and then this came up. And again, it sounds like the only reason why it's costing two hundred thousand more is because another box. We have to check three of the boxes. We had it covered until these three of the boxes got added. So again, maybe it's just optics, but I'm concerned that the communication, you know, I don't want people to think that there was a bait and switch here. And it's really because we have 
un, I guess unanticipated demands in other areas yeah. of our population. That's really what the cost is being incurred, correct? And you'll know that some of those unanticipated demands are not necessarily all in the PM. <laughs> but when you, when you look at the big picture and you're squeezing everything and putting everything together, it does affect those PM runs. So, um, like, like Katie said, we have proposals from, um, from two uh, consultants already who uh, can come in and do an efficiency um, study for us. And we're waiting on one more proposal I should get next week. So once we have all three proposals, we can look at them and see um, how much it costs to have somebody do that. They're not cheap. I mean, I think one proposal was a little less than 10000 One One's coming in at 12000 I don't know about the third one. But um, they are supposed to do a comprehensive study. They'll let us know if we are operating as efficiently as possible. Um, or they'll say that there are ways we can, you know, make some changes and do things a little bit better, and they'll give us those recommendations. But it isn't just an overnight thing. It's going to take them a few months. Can I ask a question about that? So Katie just mentioned that they don't just look at us, they look at the whole East End. So is this something that can be done as part of the shared services? For, for the 10,000, 12,000, that's basically, they're looking at us. Oh, they're not <laughs> they have to look at our operations, but we also transport for Bridgehampton. We transport for Sagaponic. We have a Sagaponic contract on tonight's agenda. We transport for Wayne Scott. So they are they are looking at, at those runs also. So those Wayne Scott runs are going to be part of our transportation study. I'm sorry. I don't want. I, I just don't understand something here. If I'm a Sag Harbor resident and I choose to enroll my children in Our Lady of the Hamptons private school then my district has to drive me there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, state law. Because you're paying the property taxes, right? School taxes and stuff. We have to transport you, we have to give you textbooks, and we have to give you technology. <laughs> nursing and special ed. Yes, nursing yeah. services and special ed, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I have a question? I do. Um, and I think we're kind of mixing uh, two different uh, points here, but as far as the um, the, the comprehensive uh, uh, transportation study. I'd like to include students who live within one mile of the school, and then I think that's a question really for the board for us to, uh, to, to include. If we were. That was the second half of my jaw dropping, yeah. so I apologize that I didn't know the law that I have to drive a transport a San Harbor District resident that chooses to go to a private school at the same time that the children coming to our school that are a smidgen inch over a mile are walking down 114 with no sidewalks. <laughs> Transportation Committee. Any other questions about this? Right. Hey, um, is that the uh, School Business Administrator report? Yes. Is that where we are yes. on the agenda? Yes. And we're now at Yes. Okay. All right. So Pearson. Sorry. Take a while. again. Carrie Arrow. Carrie Arrow. Thank you. Um, Pearson's new after-school program. So before I start, I want to let you know that we did meet with about seven or eight students that were regulars of the yard program to get their input. They gave us a laundry list of their wants and needs, and we tried to hit all of them um, to make sure that all their personalities were um, heard. I also want to give you credit too that you looked at. How many other school districts? Like and 10. Yeah. Different school districts. Interviewed them. And, and hopefully ours did. will be the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, so Pearson After School, we're hopefully calling it PASS. Um, if we come up with a more creative name, we will do that. Um, <laughs> trying to figure it out. So it's going to be Monday through Friday um, until 5.30 p.m. The home base will be in the cafeteria. We're going to transform the cafeteria so that back area is going to have couches and um, seats, maybe possibly a foosball table so the kids feel like it's a lounge spot. Obviously, we can't use the backyard yet because of the dirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there will also the be, grass. though, with that home base, an accountability system if this means walkie-talkies between, because we're going to have four distinct locations, the cafeteria um, for kids that just want to chill, the library for, like, studying or just want to read or just want that time alone and, like, silence or meditation space, um, a sixth-grade classroom, which will be a supervised activity, um, and then the outside of the gymnasium. So that home base person is going to be the, like, almost 
the leader in the sense of knowing where everybody is at all times because that was a huge issue in the past program that we want to address in this program so we don't have to all page the kids to figure out where they are in the building. So the cafeteria, as I explained, is going to be the home base. We'll move a TV in there. We're going to try to um, figure out if we can get um, a Wii or something so that they have um, video games as well. Um, make sure the foosball table and possibly the ping pong table so it feels like a little game room. And then the library, it's still going to be homework club, but also if a kid just wants to read and just chill, that this is a spot for them. Um, not all children want to be around people sometimes. They might want, some of our introverts want space and time alone, and we need to adhere to what they, their wants are. And then the sixth grade classroom, we're thinking of this idea as um, every day being something different and somebody leading a different activity. So if that's maker space, arts and crafts, a STEAM activity, maybe a team building, maybe board games, maybe mindfulness practice or yoga, this is a spot where a kid that wants that structure still is able to do that um, besides our clubs that we do. This would be a teacher leader doing that. And then the outside gym, this is for the children that want to let off some steam and run around because they have to sit all day. So this will be either an open gym or outside organized sport with a teacher leader overseeing and supervising this. And we expect, so when they go to the, they have to check into the home base first and then they're able to disperse and we'll have like a pass system, maybe possibly walkie-talkie so that they know, and that home base lead teacher is knowing where everybody is at all times. That's it, do you guys have questions? Are you gonna leave the back room with the cafeteria set up all day? No, because we have, um, our custodians would be so wonderful and love us so much, we're gonna move it every day, but because we have study halls in there right now, um, we can't, and because of we need that back space for the capacity of high school lunch as well lunch. as seventh and eighth grade lunch. Got it. Possibly after that, then yes, after they clean it, we probably do it, but lunch is a big deal. We don't have space for everything. Yeah, I think the way it will work is that after the, um, after ninth period, the custodial crew will move the equipment, which will be stored adjacent to the cafeteria, mm -hmm. into the back of the cafeteria in time uh, prior to 251. I have three Wii's. They're coming your way. Thank you. Can you tell I use them? I like it. Can I ask you a quick yeah. question? Um, any thinking about snacks? Just because I heard a lot of kids in the old program, and that was a big thing that they liked. So thought, any thinking there? So we definitely looked into that. Um, we were going to talk to Lisa Becker about possibly having the cafeteria figure something out, um, package snacks. We have a lot of food allergies this year, especially, so we wanted to be mindful of that as well. And that will be also listed with the teacher leader. We're the also going to have vending machine downstairs so they can actually access that too. And it's going, we're going to have it up and running by the start of the school year. Okay, I think the other program just handed some stuff out, which was. Yeah, so that we're not doing that during our school. That's not going to happen. Okay. It was a mess. Go ahead, Chris. So, uh, in terms of the gym, there are many months, weeks and months during the year where we don't even have enough gym capacity mm -hmm. for our. Um, for our teams. So uh, it, do you see that as being kind of seasonal when it's not needed for sports? And sometimes it changes that day, like all of a sudden it rains, and so softball practice is inside, as an example. I think we're still going to have those four distinct locations, but we're going to have to figure out a way if they go to the exercise rooms, right, or the weight rooms, we'll figure out something so that it's a solution so you can still something. move around, because kids need to move around. I need to move around. Yeah, but you're right, the, the workout rooms might be the solution. They would be perfect. Put it on a treadmill. Any other questions? <laughs> How many kids actually take advantage of the library study time? Uh, the, the so at the beginning, it fluctuates depending on year and also when report cards come out. So at the beginning of the year, it's about like 40 kids to start. Then after the first quarter, it might dwindle off. And then for some reason, kids after the third quarter or second quarter, you see a massive, like everybody's coming again, and right before Regents is in finals, they come again, so it, it ebbs and flows depending on what's going on. And, or depending on who's in the room. So if there's a math test coming up, Mr. Maya might be there, and everybody might be there for Mr. Maya. Or if there's an English assignment and people are writing an essay, they're there because Ms. Caulfield's there. Like it's just dependent on who's leading as well. I'm sorry, I have one more question. This, first of all, thank you, because I think that this is a much more well-rounded, comprehensive after-school program than we've had. 
Um, we've had a very good after school program, but this is even broader in terms of appeal, I think. Um, but it looks like this will require more staffing yes. than we've had. So just in terms of, because we haven't gotten you know, necessarily a budget uh, this yet, will it cost the district any more than previous programs? Or what, what do you anticipate the cost will be? I anticipate that it's going to probably be flat. You can talk about this a little bit more. Because we have clubs going on as well, this will some, some of it might, so that structured time within that might take over a club that might be happening. That's not happening anymore. So I think the only time that is the extension to that 530. But we're ending at 251 now, so it's actually not that much longer. So I think, I think club be advisor is like a club that like so for our club it we're still gonna have middle school clubs, right? Right. But some of those middle school clubs, right, might yeah. be eaten up from that structured right. so I think the, club, the club advisor would be redirected to yes. the because right. the old program used to have contributions from municipalities. And so a big part of the funding was from municipalities. Do we still see that as being the case, or are we, is the district and taxpayers absorbing all the course, cost of the new program? The old, I, I the talked old program to cost was 30, the old co program cost about 30,000. Right. After the all the contributions, right. after all the grants and all the aid, it's about 30,000 a year that we, that we budget for. Um, and we budgeted mostly in, um, in the salary benefit. So, I don't think what Brittany's describing is going to cost us 30000 so that there's probably going to be enough savings there, which is I actually, I actually think it's going to be more. Yeah. You do? Uh, yeah, I do. More than uh, 30000 I do. Uh, so I want to be upfront about that. Just do the basic math. Uh, if you're having four people, even if you, even if you assume that two of those people are um, going to be borrowed from existing clubs, if you're going to be there for two hours a day, it could be a three hundred dollar cost for those two people, or you know, if you're going to put, if you're going to pay the collective bargaining agreement negotiated rate, uh, which remains to be seen. I believe that's bargaining unit work, and we'd have to go through that. So there could be an increased cost. I would suspect they are there is, but I think that that also is a reasonable um, burden to take on if the goal is to have a more well-rounded structured program remember the old program was one room for kids with one person and an assistant and the kids were sort of sent out from there without supervision which was the downside of the program the positive was that kids had a, a home base and felt like they had a, a place to go what we're talking about now is a full-fledged after-school program where every place in the school the kids would have an adult supervisor that's a different you know a different ball game and it's going to cost a little bit mm -hmm. so i'm not saying it's not worth more i just always think if we talk about implementing new programs hand in glove we should always know what that's going to cost just so we're being completely open and transparent that's all mm -hmm. any other questions excellent thank you So the only other thing that um, is before the board, if they may want, if they have any um, questions, is to move to the two policy and government review both of those policies and open discussions in the, the last two board meetings. So, okay. Um, but otherwise, you can move forward with the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. All right. So um, on the consent agenda, um, we did not provide hard copies for the district wellness policy for the board because it's large. Mm -hmm. But we do have the first read of um, policy 3220 in front of you. So at this time, I will ask for a motion to um, approve consent agenda items one through, um, let's do seven. So moved. Thank you. A second. A second. Any discussion? I did have a question about number seven. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to get a sense of, because I think so much great work and thought and consideration was put into the revised policy, um, if there was going to be any anticipated additional cost when this is approved to how we operate. There was, um, there was this, uh, an item with, if we ever wanted to go with, um, like later busing 
A lot of the Burberton is explore and look That's what for. I thought, right. Yeah. Just, so so it's like kind of organically going into a direction of yeah, mindfulness. Like, yeah. But yeah. If we hit if we hit something that was big, it would be teeing it up. Exactly. And actually Perfect. the policy committee was very careful and um, you're getting this kind of all boards are getting this guidance, all superintendents are getting this guidance that anything that's policy is the law of the district. So they're saying the law should be very um, the policy part should be Brief. Brief and very open <laughs> yeah. so that you don't aren't litigious and the regulation part to be more determinate. But that's not policy, that's just guidance. So then that's what we did. So that's really guidance. Preschool, so okay. if it became a cost yes. item, you can change regulation without it being put before the board or having to be voted upon. Any other discussion? Um, I would, I just a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, one is the, the new uh, proposed wellness policy, it's not on the website still yet, right? Did the draft get up on the website? Before? I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and I know, I know it's long. Um, I, I just personally, when we're voting on something, I, I would just like to, even if we're sharing copies to save paper so that we can sort of review. Um, I'd appreciate that. And then I just wanted to raise on the public participation of board meetings. Um, and I know we've had this discussion, but I just want to raise it again. Um, I, I think it's absolutely the right thing to expand opportunities for public input. And I think it's absolutely the right thing to, uh, a public input one, free people from being restricted to the agenda. But where I do think we're making a mistake is not putting some kind of time limit here. So I just want to raise that again with my colleagues to see if with some time has passed, if anyone has given some other thought to that and might reconsider where we can put some kind of time limit. Do you want to make a motion? Well, even if the, I mean, here we even say comments should be as brief as possible. We have no, excuse me, guidance. And I recall in the conversation that people said three people would be at three minutes. That was correct. Right? So that that's not in here. Passed. And I think it should be, if that's what we agreed to. That's my reflection. And the other is just either limiting public input one to either, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, so I, would, what I think would, I hear is that you're making a motion on the floor. That you like to, am I hearing you say that you'd like to make a, a motion to make an addendum to the policy as it reads? Yes, to, to make sure that it includes the three minute per person time frame that was discussed when we all discussed this, and that also to put a some kind of cap on public in, in terms of inclusive, just so that we can move on with the meeting, we can always go back. What are you proposing? All right, I'll, I'll put 15 minutes on there, or I was just hoping we could discuss it and people could say. We can, we'll put a motion on the floor and discuss okay. it. Okay. So the, um, let's do them separately. So there's a motion on the floor to amend, um, Policy 3220 to limit the time per person to three minutes. Can I get a second for the motion on the floor? Second. second. Thank you. All right. Um, any discussion on the motion on the floor? Sure. Um, this policy, you know, it really pertains to uh, openness at, at the podium at the beginning of the meeting. Now, I believe that we could put in certain procedures ourselves if we see, you know, 180 people here, we can say, okay, we can dispense of our normal business and move over to the auditorium. Everyone can have five minutes. And I believe that we could do that as a board in that particular meeting. Um, and I also think that a time period, which I agree with, the three minutes, that we could set up as a procedure rather than um, as part of a policy. Any other discussion? Go ahead. I feel like we have moved a, a, mountains to get to a very good place on this board with new members and with the community, and that would be a giant step backwards. So I would not limit it whatsoever. And I agree with Tommy John, if this room fills up one day, then take your consent agenda and move it to later and, and deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. I, I, we've been in two meetings since we opened up public input one, and as you saw this evening, no one's here. 
I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with Stephanie as the person who I think moved to, to have this change. To me, it was just really troubling to see parents and other members of the community come to meetings and have to sit here for hours and often leave before they even get a chance to speak. We've heard these horror stories about how many people are going to show up and we're going to be here forever. So far, that hasn't happened. If that starts happening, I agree with Tommy John. If, if there's a lot of people here, it's, there's probably a reason for it, and we probably ought to hear from them. But there's nothing that prevents us from revisiting this if these projected horror stories come true and we find us ourselves sitting here for hours at a time listening to the public. We can revisit at that time whether it would be appropriate. But I also agree with Stephanie. We've, we've gotten some wonderful feedback from the, uh, in, the, in the newspaper and also just um, members of the community commenting on how nice it is and, and how different it feels at board meetings. And so um, I think the, the three minute thing I have no problem with. I think that's what we approved mm -hmm. when we passed this. But I think it, it's a wonderful change and, and, and I don't think we should put limits on it for, for the public. Um, that's my thought. Wait, hang on. Let's hear from everybody first. Go ahead. Along uh, what Tommy John was saying, that if there ever does come that time when there's 100 people here, according to open meetings laws, we would have to move the meeting into the auditorium anyway. Chris, you want to read? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's a good idea to open it up, and so I support that. I think the three minutes is a good idea as well. Otherwise, you can have something that goes on for 20 minutes, and the other people who are waiting might have to leave. I can tell you from sitting here in the past year that I can't remember once it's, it's very rare that someone is told that they need to wrap it up or that they have to stop. And it's much harder to tell someone to stop than it is to say, you can go on longer. So I always think it's better to structure it and then you can always give back. It's exactly. much harder, particularly if you have a full room. That's when things tend to be more elevated and energized. It's much harder to try to, to reel something back then. So what I would really suggest is that it's three minutes that we have some time frame. I think 15 minutes is too short. I might advocate for 20 or 25 minutes. But we can always extend it. If there's a lot of people here, you can always make, if that is the exception, then that's the time to make the exact exception. If you, it's much harder to rein it in. It, then that seems, it always comes off as being punitive. So, um, and I do think it needs to be in whatever it is in the policy because that is what governs how we operate. And that's what the public has communicated on how we and how we operate. So I would suggest three minutes and having it be 20 or 25 minutes. And if we know that there's a hot issue and more people have shown up, you can get the will of the board and say tonight should we allow you know 45 minutes. But I do know that um, you know I looked at a lot of other districts. I can't find many districts of any actually that have an open-ended input one on anything. I just can't. That's not and that's not what's recommended by. We just had a you know offsite. NISBA does not, that's not what they recommend. They recommend something more structured. So I, you know, that would be my input. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll weigh in. I, I think I like the way it reads. I, I thought I had remembered um, something about three minutes, but when Victoria went over the um, video, her understanding was um, differently. So I'm okay with the way it reads, but is there any other discussion on the motion on the floor, which is to limit to three minutes. Anybody want a second opportunity to weigh in? Yeah, Alex, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time following you because I think you're you're confusing A and B, or not okay. confusing. I, what I think I hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we cap it at three minutes, but we don't eat per person, but that you're not capping a total of 15 minutes. Right, cap three minutes, which I think is what we voted on, yes. three minutes per speaker, but there is no limit on public And the motion on the floor, the I motion believe, on the floor is, just the three is only the three minute part. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor of capping um, each person to three minutes in public input one, raise your hand so Victoria can take a count. All those opposed, did you get that? Mm -hmm. All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. We'll amend the, um, the policy. The second motion on the floor is to cap public input one to 15 minutes. Um, can I get a motion to um, approve the amendment to the policy? 
So moved. Second. Well, I, see, I'm confused. So the whole point of having a discussion is to get a sense of where people are. There's two motions on the floor. Right, but you did the three minutes. Right. Right. So now That's this is done. for this is about a full limit, right. right? But we just had a conversation, and it's clear that we people still need don't to seem vote. to want fifteen minutes. We need. Do you want to um, change the motion? Right. So I mean, I, I get the sense that most people probably don't want any limit, but I will put a, lim uh, a motion on the floor to at least cap it because I think it's always easier to take the genie out of the bottle than to put it back in. We can always extend. So I'd like to amend the 15-minute motion to put a motion on the floor for a 20-minute cap for public input one. All right, there's a motion on the floor to cap public input motion one to 20 on minutes. Can I get a second on the motion on the floor? I'll second it. All right, discussion. I just, want to discuss? I just want to say that supporting that does not mean that, that one does, a board member does not support public input at all. Exactly. You know, I'm advocating that if more people are here and lined up and we see that there's a need to expand it, that we have the board and the willingness to do so. This is really to create a structure so that we're not voting on serious board business at 11.30 at night. Any other discussion? Go ahead. reiterate my opposition to this for reasons already stated. <laughs> Any other discussion on the floor? Maybe. All right, all those in favor of capping public input one to 20 minutes. Raise your hand so Victoria can get a count. All those opposed to cupping public input one to 20 minutes. All right, the motion um, does not pass. Um, any other motions regarding um, policy uh, 3220? All right, any other discussion on the floor for consent agenda items one through seven? I, I just had a question. I couldn't find the goals meeting minutes and the stuff that we sent. It's here. No, the, we don't have the minutes in front of us. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving consent to items one through seven. Any opposed? Oh, yeah, so I mean, if you're lumping six and... You should, you should pull six if, out yeah. because six was voted differently. Uh, no, we voted to amend what was on. Right. So I request that you pull six out separately, please. Okay. And I, I and if you're going to do through seven, um, can you pull five out separately? Because I don't feel comfortable. I couldn't find okay. it, so I just don't want to prove something that I haven't had a chance to review. All right. Can I get a um, motion to approve consent agenda items one through four? So moved. Second. All those in favor of approving consent agenda items one through four? Any opposed? Any abstain? <coughs> All right, consent agenda item number five. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? I'm going to abstain because I didn't, I couldn't find it. Yep, that's fine. I had it. Um, can I get a motion to approve consent agenda item number six? As amended. As amended. So as moved. amended. So as is amended, Second. it's with three minutes per speaker, but there's no limit, right? But there's no limit. Okay. Yep. But this isn't approving, we're not voting on approving the policy. We're voting that we just, we're approving that we've done a reading of the policy. Those are two different things. Right? Oh, just, we're okay. proving Yes, thank right. you. So that's yep. different. We're not, oh, okay. we're not weighing thank in on whether we... Right. Thank, thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's a first read of the policy. Um, okay. With edits. With edits. Right. Yep. So it doesn't mean that we approve the Right. Policy. We'll get two more. Okay. Reasons. Thank yep. you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Um, motion to approve um, consent to the item number seven. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Wait, this, any discussion or no? Uh, we discussed it earlier. Okay, but, so this is yeah. okay. um, all the, Any opposed? Yeah, but I, again, I just could we, if we vote these in the future, can we just have them? 
Yeah, so that we can review. So yeah, no, it, I mean, was, in, it was in the board packet, but I, I told her not to print it out because it's yeah. like 15 pages. Well, the, the other thing I would say is, and this is the point, they should all be on the website for the public to review because mm -hmm. I feel like we haven't heard from the public on stuff we're voting on that have to do with, with charters. Mm -hmm. And that's concerning to me because I really feel like we need to be getting, we're trying to have the public be more engaged, but we're not sharing information with them to engage with us. Okay. So can we please just make it a habit of do, doing that in the future would be great. Any other discussion for number seven? All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? All right, um, let's move on to consent agenda item number seven. Um, eight. eight. Thank eight. you, eight, 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 eight. Um, I do want to start with um, wellness. So the wellness is the one that has a pink draft written across the front. Now, the, um, the administration has um, put in their recommendations of how they would like these charters revised. Um, I would like to make a motion on the wellness um, in the middle of it where it says composition and requisite skills. Um, the committee had recommended that um, the composition be suggested to include Two board members or one board of education liaison. I'd like to um, I'd like to make a motion to amend this to say at most two board members. Second. Um, so, can I get some discussion on the motion on the floor to add at most two board members to the charter for the wellness? And it would still Could say or why, one board. Why, why that's a suggestion from three to two? I'm not opposed. I'm just curious why it's why it's an idea. Um, the thinking is that um, currently the way the charters are structured, board members have to serve on multiple committees, and that's a large time commitment. And I can speak for myself, being on the wellness committee. Um, there was a lot of um, thoughtful community members, and I felt like. Um, there wasn't a need to have multiple board members there driving that committee. So I just want to put some more flexibility in there that it doesn't have to be a large number of board members serving on the committee. That if two want to serve, they may. Um, but the thinking is that um, we don't need more than two and that um, if nobody wants to serve, then we can have a appoint somebody like a liaison that would be invited in for meetings or touch base with the administrator in charge or just kind of um, be a go-between between between the committee and the board but um, my thinking is that we can reduce the amount of hours um, it takes to be on the school board hoping that we would get more people willing to serve on the board because it is a big time commitment so that was the thinking I agree I also think that um, having too many board members on committees would inhibit public contribution because they'll, they'll feel like it's a little board heavy. So hopefully that we can get more public involved if there's less board members on it. Diana, can I just ask a question? Are you eliminating the or in your motion? You're saying a maximum of two board of education members? Yes. And you're eliminating the or? No, the or will stay there. So if nobody wants to be on it, we'll have a liaison. But Got if two it. people feel passionately about it, they can both be on it. And then no liaison making a third. Two Correct. max, period, end of story. Correct. Got it. Is, um, is this one of the committees that is legally required? It is. It is. All right. So um, oh, is this time for, for discussion? Opinion? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, considering the state has said that this is an important enough committee, that every district is legally required to have it, and considering that we still we struggle with health and wellness, not so much physical, I don't think, but mental and emotional health and wellness. We have, you know, high use of substances. We've had issues with, with um, mental mental wellness and illness, uh, health. This, I really, I, I don't think this is something that we, as a board, should say it's okay that no board member wants to serve in this and we'll just dip in on occasion. The state has said this is so critically important. Every district has to have it. I think that we should we should be required there may be others that we can be liaisons, but this just seems so critical to what we need to focus on 
I would hate to think that he would think it's okay not to show up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I think it's not a question of not showing up or not having the committee, but I think it's it would I think January made a really good point that you know there's there's I think a tendency for board members to kind of dominate these committees, and to me the whole point of having a committee um, is to get other parts of the community involved and having them feel like they're they're going to play an important role on the committees and I think having um, it's not a question of having the committee but having less of a role from the board members and more from, um, of a role from the community members having more community members on the committee would be a better thing so I, I think it's a good um, the motion is a good one and I think getting more community members with the specific backgrounds such as the social workers, guidance counselors, and nurses to get involved as well. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, mm -hmm. let's hear from everybody first. Yeah. Um, anybody else want a discussion on the floor on the amendment to the charter? I like the flexibility. Support it. All right, go ahead, Chris. Did you want to weigh in again? No, I, I think it'd be great if we can get community members. You know, historically, on most of our committees, we have well-meaning community members that sign up, and then life happens and kids happen, and homework happens, and tests happens, and performance happens, and so, you know, community members come and go on a lot of these committees because of that. I'm not sure how much that has to do with whether we have two board members on a committee or one board member on a committee, as much as it is that it's most parents are not available to, to be there frequently. Um, but anyway, so, again, I, you know, that was it. Okay. Um, so. The motion on the floor is to amend the charter to read at most two board members. All those in favor? But not the second part, the or? Uh, that's still, all the other changes, that, that's the only amendment that I'm adding. Oh, and not or board liaison? It's no, that's still there. Still, there. still there. Oh, so that's all, that's what we're voting on to have one? To have no, that I, just wanted to, I just wanted to add at most. Oh, okay. To with the copy, they didn't, so that's all I'm adding. Oh, okay. All right, any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, um, so the charter as amended, can I get a motion to approve the wellness charter as amended? So moved. Second. Um, I'm sorry, are you the, isolating them? Um, only because I, will, I have a motion for another one. So we'll, it'll go faster, I promise. Um, all those in favor of approving the wellness charter as amended? Oh, um, any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Um, as I went through these charters um, and looked at the administration's recommendation, and I was also looking at um, many of you, um, almost all of you, have let me know your preferences on what committees you would like to serve on. Um, and all of these charters read that they have at least two, some of them say three board members on it. So as it stands, um, everybody would have to pick a couple more committees to serve on and another liaison. So um, I would like to make a motion that the other charters read similarly to the wellness in the sense that um, at most two, and if nobody wants to do it, then we appoint a liaison. So if two people are very passionate about athletics or communication or whatever it is, um, two people can be on that committee and serve on that committee, but if there's a committee that we feel the, um, the community can run without a board member on it every single time, then that might, again, increase community participation and um, decrease the number of night board members are in meetings. So can I make a mm -hmm. friendly amendment to that? Yeah. So I think on some of these, um, and I agree with Chris that you know, given that nutrition and wellness is state mandated and I supported that you know that it's two is fine or board liaison is fine. There. But for example, the wall of honor, what if the language was two board members of board liaison or board designated representative? So the reason I'm thinking this is on the wall of honor committee, for example, we have two former board members who are both distinguished Pearson alums who have been on this committee from the beginning and um, at least one of them is willing to continue to serve and if they were this board could then designate them as our board designated representatives on the committee. So no board member here would need to be on the committee 
because they would be, on, and, and, and I think only of everybody at this table, only one of us is a Pearson alum anyway, right? They're the only Pearson alum? That's right. So, um, so that gives even more flexibility to what you're talking about. You see what I'm saying? So somebody who... So for clarification, so for Wall of Honor, for example, if nobody wanted to be on it, there would not be a liaison? We would right, appoint right. somebody so outside? Right, so a board-designated representative. So for example, it could be two people who are Pearson alums. Maybe they were former board members, but you know that, that are the are board's representatives. Do you see, see what I'm saying? Are you talking specifically for the Wall of Honor? Could yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. The for the wall, well, I, it, well, it comes up to me for the Wall of Honor. Yeah, we could go through and it could, maybe there's, uh, actually I don't see that it would make sense for any others. Yeah. But well, I, I think the only thing that I'm thinking is that um, the whoever it is that we appoint to be the liaison for that committee, mm -hmm. for the board, is somebody that I would have to be in touch with anyway. So from for me, I mean, you can put a motion on the floor to have that read that way, but for me, I would rather have the liaisons be board members because I have to be in contact with my board anyway. Um, but okay, but what about in this case of the Wall of Honor then with the designated, like a board designated person? To so, but what would the role be? What are you envisioning well, they, the role? Well, they're still doing what they were doing before. Oh, I see. What they could just be on the committee anyway. Okay, I don't know. I, it just seemed to me that if you're trying to reduce the amount of time that board members are on it, we have two people who have been on that committee from the beginning. They can continue to move it along and report right. back. Right, and, right? I, I, and I agree they should be on the committee. But. Right, so I don't know. So however however you need to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want to be, do you want to put a motion on the floor for that particular charter? Well, yeah, well, so I'm, I'm asking what would work. So would language in this particular one work? I, what I'm trying to solve? What, what Yes, yeah. Stephanie, you've had your hand up. I understand where you're going, and it would work wonderfully in its current phase, but go two years out, and maybe the board members, ex-board members, don't want to be on the Wall of Honor Committee, and you're going to have a charter that then entrusts the Wall of Honor Committee by charter to someone else right but hold on but you're saying you know board member board liaison or board designated representative yeah i, I, so I it's think just flexibility right but what you're suggesting is is opposite which is what i've been suggesting and it's too late to do anything <laughs> about it on these <laughs> charters if you made them i would make a motion the other way around i'm not because it's too late to do it is that there is a committee appointed liaison to the board of education I've always felt that the committees oh, yeah. should appoint their own liaison to report back to the board. We're not opening a can of worms. <laughs> and I understand what, what you're saying now, and in reality, and right now, with, with Sandy and Teresa on, on that wall of honor, that works perfectly. But if they win the lotto and move to West Palm Beach, then we have a charter that allows yeah, but then we have to pick somebody else. So it'd be a board member, board liaison, mm -hmm. or board. So I, I think yeah. that we should put a motion on the floor because there's enough discussion about it. Okay, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix it, but you see what I'm getting. I'm trying to solve all these issues at one thing. So the the motion that I made on the floor, um, let's resolve that motion first because we kind of got sidetracked. That's my fault. Um, the motion on the floor is that. Um, the remaining charters would read similar to the nutrition and health and wellness in that maximum of two, um, minimum at least a liaison. That type of motion. I, correct. Can a second for that motion? Second. I, Can second? I just make a comment? I, yeah. I, just, I don't think it needs fixing. I think what Diana has suggested accomplishes what you're talking about, which is there may be a committee like the Wall of Honor Committee where there are members of the community who are going to do a better job of running that committee. We don't need a board member on there. We'll just have a liaison. And the liaison maybe is not going to do anything more than communicate between Diana and Okay. 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 And All right. So that's and I okay. volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then can I just, all right, so, so I think so, you're right. If that's the case, does everybody think that that's right? And then we don't need to do well, what the discussion's on, The discussion is on the floor on the motion. All right, go ahead. So I have a question then about your motion. Yes. And my only is about the audit committee. Yes. Does that still apply on that committee where I'm 
my understanding was, isn't that the one committee we're all supposed to be on? We don't have to. The, we change, okay. but we, we did change that last time. Right, but is there some mandate, or we don't? We don't there's no, no, there is no okay. mandate. Okay. All I right. did look into that. There is no mandate. Okay. And we're going to talk about that separately, right? Audit committee. Oh, audit uh, the, the emotion on the floor is to have that language in all the other charters. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. so okay. I was asking if charters. that meant audit that, too. Yes, and it does right. mean audit too. Yeah, we yeah. were under a misconception that really is a Santa Claus, and now we found out that we don't have to be on the audit committee. The, the, um, my, only, Go ahead. my only concern about, because I do think it's interesting and I like the idea of, um, I don't know if us stepping back means that the people will necessarily step up because we, you know, we beg people every year to even sign up for committees, and then people sign up and then they just don't show up, regardless of, they, some that have never been to a meeting, so they even haven't had a bad experience and don't show up. It's just life happens, it's really hard, right? Um, but my, so my concern is if we decide that we're not gonna have any board member on a committee, sometimes those meetings could be like two administrators in the house, or like really, those, some of those meetings get awfully small, because it's during playoff season or it's during finals or whatever. So I would hope, I'm a little concerned that the progress we have through committees may, may take a step back, not forward, because we're just not gonna have critical mass at some of these meetings sometimes to get anything done. Um, and that's just from my experience of you know, being on lots of different committees. But, uh, so if that happens, what do we do? Because we could be dead in the water. Any other discussion on the yes. floor? Go ahead. Uh, two things. Uh, first of all, um, I think the uh, Educational Facilities Planning Committee should have two people from this board on it at all meetings. That, that's just my, my belief. Um, there's a lot of important uh, things that happen in the committee, and, uh, and, and we should be represented there. Um, as far as uh, community and, and, and communities the community's attendance at its meetings. I mean, what, what does it say if, if the community is not attending a meeting? I, I wonder if we even need the committee then, if we don't have members of the community, if it's myself and Mr. Malone in a room, uh, you know, <laughs> is that really not a committee then? And we should explore whether or not the committee is effective in general. I think you bring up a great point. Um, you know, maybe that needs to, uh, to change or, you know, maybe the issues need to be handled here. Because they do serve at the at the uh, at the pleasure and the will of, of this board, but um, getting back to my first point, I would like to uh, take the educational facilities planning committee out of that motion and require. I am making a motion. I am making a motion <laughs> that we require two members of our board on the educational facilities planning committee. Can I get a second for the motion on the floor? I'll second that. Discussion on the motion on the floor, which is to um, not have this language apply to the EFPC. Yeah, I just have a question. So how is that, how would audit be less important in terms of needing at least two members than facilities? You know, like, I, how do you determine? Go ahead, sorry, sorry. I don't know when you can answer or not. I have to read that book January gave me. <laughs> uh, because there's an external auditor that goes through this with a fine tooth comb, and, and we review, you know, Ernest and Young's audit so but I know, but I, I'm not downplaying I mean, the we're importance not of an audit, but we're not, not forensic accountants and we're not gonna find the hidden raincoat and the pencil supply. Um, where on the Educational Planning Facilities Committee, big things that are affecting the kids are being discussed. But that, that could be said for wellness. That could be said for several other committees. So I understand what you're saying, and I'm not an accountant, so I look at those Spreadsheets and it, I, you know, I've managed with budgets, but I, I'm not an accountant, so I very good manage it. Although we used to have year after year after year uh, internal lot, we used to have um, you know two different auditing processes. We stopped when the state came in <coughs> to do an internal audit. We never put that piece piece back in place, so we've missed that component of it since since the state audit, which every district had. It wasn't it was an issue with us, um, but I but I think the argument that you make. Tommy John is a compelling one that I could apply to any of um, our long-standing committees. I certainly think wellness is, if, you know, has implications across the district and is as important as facilities. I, I just worry about audit. I agree. I mean, look, I'm not a forensic accountant either, and I, I'm all for having less meetings. Move the part. 
But I just also look at you know our fiduciary responsibility here, and one of the primary jobs of ours is supposed to be the fiscal management of the district. So that concerns me there. So I wonder if there's an exception for facilities. I completely understand the logic that maybe we have to make that exception for audit too. And okay, so the motion so is specific to facilities, and yep, you know, we the motion is specific to facilities. So I'm all the way in on that. I. Um, I agree that there's there's a lot of that there's some committees that we may feel personally we should have more people there this sort of thing um, in my view the language allows for that sort of flexibility so that if we have a, as a board feel like it's important to have two people on the committee the language does not limit that um, and if we as a board um, feel like um, the liaison needs to step it up and show up to more meetings. Um, then the flat, that it allows for that flexibility. What, in my view, what the language does is it also allows the flexibility that if we want to step back and let a a, com a committee that's running well run without us, that we have that flexibility as well. Which I'm not reading in the charter as they are written, which is why I made the motions in the first place. So. It's not that I disagree that the EFPC shouldn't have two people on it. As board president, I can assign two people on it. That's not an issue. That's what the language allows for. It gives for that flexibility. Any other discussion on the motion on the floor, which is um, to have two people on EFPC? I, just, I concur with what you just said, Diane. So I think the proposed language, in my view, is good for all these committees. So just a, a question of clarity. So the way that it is written, would, would one interpret it that if you had a board member that wanted to volunteer for a committee, they could, if there wasn't a long list of seven people and only one person or two people said they want to be in a committee, they will. Otherwise, it gives a flexibility for a liaison. Is that right. accurate? Correct. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so um, any other discussion on Tommy John's motion? Um, all those in favor? I'm sorry, can yeah. I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So then why is that motion, why is that motion needed when the language says to, and da, da. so I just, I just want to understand why. As a trustee, I raised the motion, somebody seconded it, and now we're obligated to vote on it. Yep. I think it's not going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wanted yes. to make it a requirement, yes. that was the difference. He wanted to make it a requirement, not an option. And the way so it's written he, is an option. But, but what you're saying is the way you have it before, we can just make sure there's two on. Mm -hmm. And as after we do that, you can say, look, we really need to make sure two I will be one of them, and then somebody else, and then we have two. Right? And then your address. Right? He no, wants I, I, I Tommy John wants two required. Right now it's right. optional. Okay. Right. Like if you didn't have two board members that wanted to be on it and Tommy John is passed, then Diana would have to assign board members whether they wanted to or not. Whereas the way that it's written here, if you don't have two, then a uh, liaison would be assigned and you wouldn't have two or you, maybe you wouldn't even have one. Right. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. Not I think I understand. All right, it's not that I don't want to be smart, but maybe like the public input thing where I wanted the requirement and we're not having it. Let's just see if there's a problem and then we'll go next. Okay. We can vote. Let's vote any, on the Any motion. other discussion on the yeah. motion on the floor? All right, all those in favor of the FPC motion. having two members? Aye. <laughs> all those opposed? Any abstain? All right, so um, we're going back to the original motion on the floor is that the language for at most two, at least a liaison, applies to all the other charters. Okay. Second. Any discussion on that one? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Um, are there any other um, amendments or language that you guys would like to address in these charters individually before we wrap them all up in a pretty bow and um, adopt them. No other motions? I have one, but it won't go over well. <laughs> Now's the time. I motion that we do away with all the charters. <laughs> Second for the motion on the floor. Second, <laughs> second for the motion on the floor. Discussion. Yeah. Well, um, so at what point are we discussing what committees stay and what go? And uh, the, and the ones that are mandated are audit and wellness are mandated. Are there any others? The only two that are ad hoc 
Um, well, oh, policy is mandated, right? Facilities. Um, oh, facilities is mandated? Yeah. Okay. Audit, ESPC, wellness, and policy are all mandated. Um, athletic and communication are ad hoc. Okay. So at the end of the consent agenda, there'll be some discussion about adding committees, right. removing committees, okay. that whole thing. Yeah, because, all right. Um, there was a motion on the floor to not have any charters. All those in favor of not having any charters? Oh, yeah, I was, was there a second? There, there was. There was a first one. Uh, but second. I kind of jokingly All those in favor? No, no, no. Yeah, we're a false. Yeah. 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 All right. Wait, I just want to make sure we're clear. Okay. Strike that from the right. You have to ready to hang yourself. Got it. That one I got. All right. Um, a motion to approve, um, adopt the revised charters as amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. All right, let's move into the business the, item. Before we move yeah. on, I, it, it doesn't relate to how I voted, but um, on the website under Board of Ed, you can get to the committees. Um, for each committee, can the first thing be listed on the top charter, or so just be make sure it's all clear? Because from one committee to another, things are organized differently, and it can, you know, the harder we make it is for people to find information, they're just going to give up. So if we can structure it to make it as easy as possible, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to approve business items 9 through 26? Can I, can I, can I ask? Out? Yeah, we're yeah, it Can out. I ask you to pull out uh, 24 and do that separately, please? Yep, let's just do uh, 9 through 23. So moved. Second. Um, discussion. Um, for 15, can, can uh, we just get a confirmation if there's any difference from the 2016-17 school year? This is approved 16, 17 annual performance review plan. Is that supposed to be 17, 18? We went through all the paperwork. And there's actually, it's, it's called an implementation or one phase, and there's like two other phases of it. We were actually trying to make sure that that was right, but Mary said it was. Yeah, we checked with the attorneys, and, and that's, 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 that's what they're supposed to have. So this is the annual performance review plan for last school year? No, this is like the implementation. So the actual resolution, it says that it's for authorized the superintendent to execute the 1678 PPR implementation certification. That's all this is for. Like, oh, for last year. At, at, right. at the end of last year, there's the next step, and this is yeah, all the that next step. I, I wasn't clear on that. Yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 We had to have the attorney do that for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion for 9 through 23? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right, can I get a motion to approve just 24? So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah, I, I just have, uh, are we allowed to discuss the issue of the financial sir, or? The financial? Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, the increase. Yeah, so, well, if you've got questions about a contract before yes. it's approved, that's executive session. Right, so I can't. Um, you can move to go to exec or table mm -hmm. it. Do we need to go, yeah, then do we need to move to exec? You can make a motion. I don't know what your question is. Okay, so. so I have a question, but I don't think I'm allowed to ask it in public. Yeah. Okay, so you can either make a motion to go into exec, or you can make a motion to table it. I would so I don't know what to do. Go into exec, because tabling it will... We, 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 we need the park for our yeah, preseason, which it's starts right. in a week from today. So we can go into exec. So we should go into exec and answer your questions okay. rather yeah. than table the oh, item. I'm sorry, yeah. can I make a motion to go into exec? Yeah. yeah. Second fine. for the motion on the floor? Second. Second. Yeah, um, all those in favor of a reconvening to executive session to discuss contract agreement with the park? Aye. 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 Uh, any abstain? Or sorry, any opposed? Two opposed? All right, any abstain? All right, um, we're going to go into exec for just a couple of minutes. By the, by the way, um, all the, oh, yeah. It's got to, no. it's got to keep going. I'm sorry. No, let's just get your question answered. Uh, second by January. Time stamp, 8-19.
Thank you. And you may want to reinterrupt the camera. The, we had two reasons. Okay, so um, we have you reconvened from executive session. The executive session was to discuss um, the uh, agenda item number 24 and 26. There were some questions from the board members about um, the negotiations between um, the distance learning and the park. So those questions have been answered. Um, can I get a motion to approve? Um, we'll just so do them separately. Uh, 24? So we'll make a decision. So moved. Second. Okay. Second. Discussion? I just want to thank the park board because I think we're working more collaboratively and closer with it than we have in the past, and we're getting to a better place for the students in the community. So I want to thank them for that. Yeah. Any other discussion on 24? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion to approve uh, business item 25. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, when we get a donation, a monetary donation um, from the Wellness Foundation, does that go does that to a specific initiative in the school or does it just go to the general budget? Is there like a wellness initiative that gets attached to it? I believe this was actually. Um, uh, that someone had actually written a, written a grant for this. It was Betty. Yeah. Betty Reynosa. She, she wrote in the grant, and it was for a specific item. Okay. For the school. So the answer is yes, it was for a specific wellness item. Excellent. Thank you. Any other item? Thank you, Betty. Do you know what it was? It was it's a blender. A blender. A $500 blender. So they can use, it's a Vitamix. Oh, for the cafeteria. Yeah, they can grow the vegetables and they're going to, I guess, try to make shakes. In the cafeteria? Um, I don't know. They could do it. I think it's for the elementary school. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the elementary school. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Uh, motion to approve item 26. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, so can we just, uh, can you give us like a minute uh, superintendent on how you see now once we get this passed what this program is going to look like this coming year yep the uh, distance learning we've been utilizing distance learning rooms in the elementary and in the high school for virtual field trips um, and we can move forward now by offering this memorandum of agreement um, will provide um, a level of um, comfort and safety for our teachers um, because they've helped forge this agreement are going to be moving forward with the committee so that the course offerings in 106 schools in upstate New York um, can be made available to students that present with any specific needs and our teachers can also um, begin considering offering classes um, and we have one that we're, we already have on the docket for this fall which would be a Spanish floor where we have about five students that want us to teach, have to take Spanish for first thing in the morning. And when we come tomorrow, I'll be putting it on the distance learning network to see if there's any students that would like to pick that up. Excellent. Yeah. And, and is there a process in which students, if there's subjects that they would like to take that aren't in our curriculum, can come forward and say, is there an option to do this or that? It's just it really isn't a cafeteria program. It really is driven by the, um, when the, the uh, guidance counselors are working to developing one-on-one -on -one, and they see a pressing need with the student um, because there is only you know, nine students in the day and the distance learning is, is so limited. Um, so it, um, they meet throughout the year. Um, right now I'll be the representative. Um, I'll work with the two guidance counselors that work with high school because that's what it's offered for to see where those needs are. And it is sometimes for an advanced student in math. Um, I had a student that needed Latin because of her course offerings. It's just those very unique or very, um, a child can't fit something in their schedule or they've moved here and they're missing something. And so it tends to be for smaller uh, cohorts of students. Um, but we are a very small school. We don't see ourselves that way, but we don't, a student may move in who's had Italian because they came from another school district that had that. So this way a child can do it not only through the distance learning, but they can actually do it right from there uh, through Jabber, through their, um, their laptop. Uh, and it provides a Syracuse University classes, college classes. Um, the offering is pretty broad. But it works on a very intimate level with the, our guidance counselors. Um, once they get to understand the system more and more, can meet those needs of our students because of our restricted schedules. 
So and when they do that, let's say it's Italian, do you pay that host school no. for that instruction, or that the instruction, regardless of which direction it's going in, is free? If they're in, if it, let me take that back. If they're within our network, which is about 26 schools, it's it's reciproc reciprocal. Right. If it's out to like the Buffalo area, there may be a cost involved okay. um, because they're out of what we call our network. Um, so sometimes there's a cost involved if they're way out of our network. But we have with 26 schools that tends, and many of them have multiple distance learning classrooms. So usually you can get your needs met within that within that reciprocal network. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? All right, motion's carried. Motion to approve um, special education actions number 27 and 28. <coughs> Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion's carried. Motion to approve personnel actions 29 through 51. <coughs> so moved. Second. Any discussion? I had uh, uh, one question as a follow-up to our <coughs> high school principal. Mm -hmm. what, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm um, so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just got very worried. Um, we are removing personnel action number 34. So the motion on the floor is going to be for 29 through 33, and then again from 35 to 51. Sorry, we so amend the minutes. Uh -huh. gotcha. Thank you. Discussion. Go ahead. I had questions on two separate ones. Mm -hmm. One is on item 35, since preseason starts in a week. Um, what will happen to the JV field hockey players? That's an Eric question. Yeah. Right, we'll have to get back to you on that. Let's get back to you on that. So okay. Eric's away. And and um, this, like and he, I don't know when he's coming back, but assuming that um, you have players that are expecting, we, we earlier it sounded like the expectation was coaches would be in touch with players. Mm -hmm. That you may have players wondering and not knowing. So if he's gone this week, if our athletic director is gone. You may want to consider having some kind of outreach to those players to let them know, you know, something. Any um, other discussion on the floor? No, no, I had, I had another question. Yeah, go ahead. The um, uh, earlier we heard from a high school principal about, um, I think, an, uh, English is a, it's not ESL. English is a new language. E e e N L. Yes. E N L. That we were going to be adding that post, right? <coughs> yes. So when we were at, we add that post. Um, so it's just one more additional to the budget, and because it was—is that because it was an unexpected need after the budget was approved? No, that was discussed was that in the budget. as part of. I I know that it was uh, discussed as part of the budget process that there was an additional uh, 1.0 FTE that was requested. Yeah, I saw I saw the I saw the presentation, but it was about spending more money. It wasn't. It was there wasn't like a, a, a bullet point about a specific headcount. So if it's a new headcount, but we don't have to approve a new headcount, correct? Are you asking about like creating, no, you don't have to create a new position when you hire a new person in a role that already has that position created. If, if a department exists already and you're adding a headcount to that department, you don't have to create a new position no. for it? No. Okay. And for example, like you see that we established technology education teacher position for this board agenda was because the former teacher was actually their title was industrial arts teacher. Right, but that was a position that already existed and you're changing the title. This is you're adding a new position. Yeah. Right? If we hired another math teacher, we wouldn't have to create a math teacher position. Yeah, we have other ENL teachers. Okay. Cool. Any other discussion on the floor? All right, uh, those, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Can I can't congratulate two people in our Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please introduce Would you like to introduce yourselves very quickly and just, yes. just give a little beauty pageant wave? So I'm William Rainey. I'm uh, a sixth grade science teacher. I'm um, very Welcome. excited uh, to be here and be here for a long time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome. I'd like to move on to the items for discussion. Um, the 
first thing on the items for discussion is recommendations about the development of a transportation committee and a diversity committee. Um, Ms. Graves, would you like to give a board a recommendation on those two committees? Um, I think that based on um, the feedback uh, from the uh, from our goal setting meeting, we actually had 98 sticker points for diversity. Um, so I think that, that we heard very clearly. My recommendation is we form um, a subcommittee underneath our facilities planning committee to be our be the transportation committee. And the transportation committee certainly has enough to look at. Our safe routes to school grant, um, the walking within a mile of school, um, and uh, there's another point. Um, that I think that that would be important. And that's a very strong committee, um, the Educational Facilities Command uh, Committee. They have a tremendous amount of background knowledge. They are very tiled into the community. So I think that having members from that committee sit on the Transportation Committee, plus new membership that is very interested, I think would be um, just a wonderful formula. In the same manner, I think that the diversity committee um, could also play a part from the, our wellness. They could be a subcommittee of our wellness because I think that really does play a, a significant role in the wellness of our community. If we think about diversity and the wellness of our students and how much they engage in the school district and how they want to be there, and the wellness committee also is a very, very high functioning, um, they get a lot done, they take a lot of initiative. Um, and if we make that a subcommittee of the wellness, the, a diversity committee, I think we would be starting off with a very strong suit. So that's my recommendation. So um, I wholly support that recommendation. I'd like to make a motion that we um, develop a transportation committee and a diversity committee and have them be subcommittees of the EFTC and the wellness respectively um, so that they can <coughs> tie into those two committees and with those um, those uh, board members and administrators and, and kind of report through those. Second. Discussion on the floor. Yeah, I'd like to yeah. offer a friendly suggestion. Um, just given the history of some of the issues that have been tackled in the district uh, related to facilities, uh, I think that some of the folks in facilities uh, will see the issue of transportation very differently than some of the folks who serve in wellness because actually transportation is also very much a wellness issue. When you create safe routes to school, if you have a more um, sidewalks, if you move your start time later, some more kids might actually bike or walk to school. Um, is it sort of, it might be a little bit of a different perspective than folks who might be solely focused on busing. So I just wonder if there might be any consideration to trying to have some kind of joint subcommittee where you have folks from wellness and from facilities planning to serve on transportation because I think it's different perspectives and they need to work together um, and so to promote not only better transportation and but also wellness so I, that would just be my one something to consider I think that you're I think you're going to see those two subcommittees populated um, immediately I think you're going to see community members that want to be part of both the transportation subcommittee and the diversity subcommittee um, I've heard a lot of really positive feedback I think that you're going to see, um, again, it's nice to have folks that have sat on committees for a long time, but I think you're also going to see a strong component from our community that would like to be part of that committee. Um, I think we're going to see that immediately. I have a procedural question on this before we vote on it. Um, my understanding about subcommittees, just board subcommittees, is that you have a committee. And those committee members at any time can decide to have a subcommittee about something that then rolls back up to the major committee. The major committee is the one that votes on what they see up, and then it gets brought to the board. So subcommittees are subsets of what the committee is. So it would, if this is the case, I mean, I think just based on our goal setting, there are clearly community members that might step forward to be on a subcommittee. But the way board committees operate is subcommittees are created out of the, the overarching committee, made up of those committee members. So then are these subcommittee members would be committee members, right? I'm just talking logistically. If we decide that they're going to be subcommittee, let's say on, on uh, transportation, then anyone who's interested on the transportation subcommittee would need to be one of the people from our charter who is on the transportation committee. And then for, they're, so they're committed to be on the transformation, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the facilities. facilities. So they're a facilities committee member. 
they're signed up for the year to be a facilities committee member, and then during that time when there's that ad hoc um, subcommittee activity, they serve on that, and then they may come back to the general committee. I don't know if that's the way to go, because you really, your subcommittee is a regular committee member, but then for a while goes off and works in tangent on something. And I think, based on, and again, this is my impression, is that we have groups of people interested specifically on this, not necessarily want to be on that bigger committee, and so perhaps um, it makes sense to keep them as, as separate ad hoc committees that are defined for a period of time. Any other discussion on the floor? I, I actually agree. I think maybe in the case of transportation, it really should be a separate committee, because I just think that, as to Chris's point, I think there are people who are not on the facilities and I don't know if you're using that, that as a recruiting tool, who, who just are looking at this from a very different perspective, who need to be on that committee. It's probably, uh, we pro oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Probably, go ahead. Uh, would they would be uh, more under the charge of, of this board rather than the facilities board, uh, or the facilities uh, committee. Um, I don't see any reason why the facilities committee couldn't ask other people to be on one of their subcommittees. They, they probably could do that. but. I see what you're saying. Why put another committee between this transportation committee and the and the board of education? So um, I would support an ad hoc committee over a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for me, just to weigh in on the discussion on the floor, um, creating it as a subcommittee um, would, I think, get it off the ground a little faster, <coughs> only because we already have a charter. We already have the administrators appointed to those committees. We already know who's running those committees. That that's already in place. Whereas if we create an ad hoc committee, then we've got to create a charter, and then um, I just feel like it's one more step in the process. Um, I can speak from my role on the wellness committee. When we had um, the first few meetings of the wellness committee had a lot of people that all had very different interests and we naturally broke into subcommittees and worked on different tasks. And so I think the idea would be is that for logistical purposes, the people that are very much interested in these two committees will just sign them up for the wellness committee or for the EFPC and let them get to work. But we already have the structures in place for um, who they report to and uh, those communication channels back to the board. So that's that's what I'm thinking. So, so then, a logistical question. So that would mean that if we had 10 people from the community that want to be part of the diversity subcommittee, they would take up 10 of the slots in our charter mm -hmm. of community members on the wellness committee, correct? Correct. Uh, and so, and they would be, so that, that means that, let's say, the diversity committee would then be limited by the membership number in our charter, and some would have to be denied because I'm guessing we wouldn't give every slot to that. I'm just you know coming up with theoretically what could evolve here because we heard that there were pretty sizable groups in both of these. So that means that some of them just cannot be part of the subcommittee. Um, let's hear. Let's hear from everybody else I have a first. Question. Oh, question. Go ahead. Question. You, so we're predicating this on in order uh, on the concept of being. An, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Um, in order to be part of the subcommittee, Chris, you're saying you would have to be part of the Educational Facilities Planning Committee. Correct. That's what a sub, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, yes. Diana's That's the motion on the floor. Yeah. No, so I'm Diana not making a motion to change the charter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. Diana. The motion on the floor is that these two committees are subcommittees of already existing committees. And that's the discussion on yeah. the floor, is that they're not ad hoc, that they're subcommittees. That's the motion on the floor. And these subcommittees could not bring in other members of the public who were not part of the parent committee. They would naturally be a part of the parent committee. They would be. Right. Can I Go call ahead. it to a point of order? Yeah. Point policy order. committee has my core central committee. But when policy has to work on something, I call in, um, for example, so when I was working on um, administrative items like the GPA, I called in many other people to, to workshop that. So they became temporarily a member of my policy committee. They weren't enrolled in my committee, but they were needed for that work. So when you do subcommittee work, you can bring in resources that are needed and individuals that are needed for the work you're doing. So when we moved on to the business administrators piece, we brought in people from our head of, our head of bus. You can bring in other individuals to do the workshop that you need 
but they don't have to stay forever. They have to stay while the work is done. And the subcommittee, so just until calling us to a point of order, the subcommittee can then report directly to the Board of Education. That subcommittee work can come directly to the Board of Education. But I have a question about that, Katie. So then, but, but then it's the committee, right, that, let's just take transportation for a second. It would be the facilities <laughs> committee that's driving and naming those mm -hmm. members. And I wanted to, one of the things I wonder is it seems like there's already quite an effort in the community that has become organically grown, it's grassroots yes. grown, in terms of an entire group of people that's been already working on transportation, some people for quite a long time. And the same thing was the group that came to our goals meeting that are already, they've already set up their own committee on diversity and had some requests. So if that's then dictated by the wellness committee all of a sudden, do you see what I mean? Like, I, I, can, can I it be a separate entity? But it, 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 to address your issue of getting up and running, it's a subcommittee, but that it wouldn't be driven by the committee? No, I, I, I think that we're, we, who come, it, 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 the chicken or the egg, okay? There are two already formed groups that are ready to get to work. Right. And it will be December, and we will be voting on the third revision of their charter draft, and they still won't be up and running. So I think the motion on the floor is that if we make them a subcommittee, because they organically can fit there, and 20 people want to be on the transportation committee, so two of those 20 join the Educational Planning Facilities Committee, they can immediately start meeting and then call in 18 experts in their subcommittee, get their recommendation immediately to the EPC to come back to the board, and maybe we do it before Christmas. And we're just speeding okay. it along. So this is the quickest way before Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I think very good point by Stephanie. I like the motion on the floor as it is. It's a way to get this rolling. We've heard about committees that people don't even show up for. They can get to work. If they feel that they need to be independent or separate, they can come and report back to us on that. But I think there was a big turnout at the last meeting we had. A lot of people interested in these things, and this is a good way to, to get it rolling. We'll have, still have flexibility and can move and be independent if they want. So I like the motion as it is. And I, and I don't think that, correct me here if I'm wrong, Diana, if, if someone from the wellness committee really wants to be a member of the subcommittee on transportation under the EPC, then it won't count against them as being on two committees. They can join the subcommittee. Okay. So I, I still think you could have your bike to school clan input in the subcommittee without worrying that the EPC is too regimented. You, you can? can yeah. You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's what Katie was saying. So, she brought a point to order. So the board can be appointing folks to that subcommittee, and the, they don't have to then be on the facilities committee to be on that subcommittee. They can become a, be, they can be experts. Mm -hmm. They can be invited in as experts to the committee. But see, that, that's, that's where I'm that's concerned. concerned. That's, that's my point. That's my point. No then, one is going to deny someone. Folks are driving the transportation solely, and my point is, there's a whole set of group that might have some other ideas than the folks on facilities. And so how does that then no come together where exclude them. more views are, uh, you know, at the table? Can, can, can I, uh, Ken wants to be on the diversity committee. Let's throw it the other way, okay? So we know that Ken wants to be on the diversity committee, so he will join the wellness committee so that he can head up his subgroup and then put the people in that subgroup and quickly get to work because there's a charter on top of them already. So it doesn't preclude anyone from joining the subcommittee. It so just like, allows them to meet faster. Right. Any other discussion on the floor for the motion on the floor? Well then, I have a question about what Stephanie just said. So then would it mean, and we'll just say, we'll say Joe Schmo, I don't want to identify anyone in the community, but Joe Schmo wants to be on the diversity committee, and so would, there's a, maybe 20 Joe Schmoes do. Do we see one of them is passionate enough about it that they are willing to be a wellness committee member, 
and then they can chair a subcommittee that allows, and do our charters of, uh, allow for that? Because again, the, the way that I was taught about committees is subcommittees, you may have a guest speaker to work on something or someone to work on a very specific task that's different than being, than, than what we're talking about, of a whole group of people on the subcommittee that aren't part of the, the regular committee. That's, what you've described is a little different than what we're talking about here, although I appreciate the, the thought behind it. So I'm just trying to understand, would we then reach out and say, okay, we want to have one or two people on the core committee who really are passionate about that subcommittee and would, would take the ball and run with it. Because if that's the case, then as we solicit volunteers for these committees, we need to make sure that those people are in place. Is that, is that what you're envisioning? That, that makes sense to me, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well then, one other question. Why would these even have to be board committee levels? Could, couldn't we just be working with, by appointing board liaisons, to the existing groups of people that are working on diversity and working on uh, uh, transportation and let them stay independent and so reduce all of the... You can, but then, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm probably jumping in. You are again putting a tremendous burden on the seven people sitting at this table to chair yet another subcommittee. No, no, not to chair. Why, why can't we be a liaison to that? There, you can, but it's just you're throwing another meeting in. So, I mean, if someone said to me, Stephanie, would you like to do this and do that? I, uh, realistically, it's unrealistic. And then they but, won't get to work. But we just reduced the number of folks that committees that we have to serve at. Right. I, I think the other thinking also though is right? that you, you also now have an administrator that can also be part of those conversations and help oversee and connect with the community. So, well, that's so that's now we're requiring the well. administrator to be attending the subcommittee meetings? No. 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 So, so then how there's, we... there's people in the subcommittee that are going to go to the regular meeting. Do we know if the people who are going to the subcommittee meetings also want to add another meeting that they go to that's not really focused on what the subcommittee is about? I'll tell you no, what. No, we haven't had those. So, I, so I, hate, well, I, hate, yeah. I, hate, I hate to say that's how we're going to do it if you don't even know we're going to have anyone that's going to want to do okay. that. Is there any other discussion on the floor? Yes, I am a member of the Educational Facilities Planning Committee, I hope. I, I volunteered for it again. I was in the last year. I am interested in transportation. I would be more than happy to start heading up, not chairing, because I think that should come from the committee itself, but at least getting the meetings going and all that. So that's one down. And I'd be willing to do diversity. Okay. Um, any other discussion on the floor? All right. All those in favor of um, putting diversity and transportation underneath wellness and EFPC and creating those committees right now? Aye. Um, all Aye. those opposed? Yes, any abstain? Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I've, I've gotten um, most of the feedback. The other thing that we just need to talk about is um, the Wall of Honor Communications and Athletic. Um, just to be thorough, are, I don't know how to proceed here. Um, those are the three that um, are not required, Wall of Honor Communications and Athletic. Um, communications and Athletic were established as ad hoc. Um, I have not gotten any feedback from anybody that anybody's interested in disbanding the Wall of Honor Committee, but I have um, heard suggestions from people to disband the Communications Committee and the Athletic Committee. So um, I guess I'll just put a motion on the floor that the Communications Committee, um, their assignment has completed and their ad hoc can finish. We'll just start with Communications. That's the motion on the floor. All right, I'll second that. All right, so discussion on um, keeping the communications committee or letting that one be over? Uh, well, I, I, I may be the only board member that was here when it was actually formed and created. So I just want to share that it was formed and created because there was so much feedback we got from the community, and particularly parents, that the communication from the district was not uh, consistent or strong enough. I think we've made good strides in that area. I still think we there are pockets, and in fact, when the committee um, was first formed, I think it was Donna Denon that was one of the chairs of the committee, there were some recommendations made, of which some were followed and some weren't. I still think there's pockets where there's, there are real issues, and I, and I certainly think we all hear about still breaks in communication. So I don't know, I don't think that the ultimate goals of that committee when it was formed as an ad hoc have been, I know that they have not been achieved. I sat through those goal meetings. 
So I, I, I would suggest we do one more year of that, and I would volunteer to be honest. So that's just me. I, I, I think we could just, we have, we have opportunities in that category that we've not achieved. We, we hear a lot of complaints still on communications. I think there's still a lot of challenges there, and we've got to, I think that maybe that community needs to be rejiggered or whatever, but I don't think to stand it with all the hit things that we all hear about that issue. But I, think I agree, but as an ad hoc committee, we need to give it a specific goals. You're saying there already were goals that haven't been completed. Well, I, I think that all, I think you know, when we talk about committees and how we work with committees, and I think I'm assuming it's another night because we don't really have it on here, right. and then, but I think that we can have a conversation about how to make them all more productive. Because you know, sometimes we leave them to their own devices versus look at our goals and say, here's some things that we could use committee work on to help achieve this or help get feedback. And there could be more direction from the board on all the committees, including that. So there were goals uh, that were uh, uh, given to this board for, by the communications committee and those goals? No. Recommendations. Recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were not met? Some were and some were not. So is that, it, I'm sorry? Was that a conscious decision from, from the board? Because I don't remember. No, no. I think you're confused. She's talking oh. about the, the, you're talking specifically about, about the committee. The commi committee. The committee. Yeah. There's still work to be done because recommendations have not been picked up by the district. Well, and, and also, and again, I was not on the communications committee last year, so I can't speak to, to the dialogue in that committee. I think all our committee work, we need to have kind of more structure around so we get a sense of progress and, and reporting. But um, we continue to hear that we have gaps in communication and there's ways to go. And so perhaps, and I think the beauty of the committee is that you get, you get administrators, teachers, community members, and parents. And to have that pipeline of dialogue back, particularly from community and parents, about how to improve this area would I be understand. helpful. I, I was wondering if there was a list of recommendations that existed for us. There were, there was, there, there were several mentioned. presentations at, at board meetings over the past several years on it. Yeah. Okay, I just have to the, the, the mm -hmm. website was mm -hmm. the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And once that website was launched, most of what was on that charter to begin with was accomplished. I don't think in its current form we're boiled down to myself, Scott, and two parents that it needs to continue. My recommendation is to dismantle it and then if you want to come up with a, a specific goal uh, in the district, you look elsewhere. Did you weigh in, Alex? I agree with Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion on the floor? I, well, I do want to circle back. When I was on the committee, there was a survey done of parents, community members, teachers, and students of how we, how they felt the communication was from the district on a variety of levels. And originally, the thought was to circle back with them after work was done to see if those objectives had been met and goals had been achieved, or if they were some of them hadn't been, or if there were new gaps. That was never done, so I don't think we know if we were communicating better. It's all, it's all anecdotal feedback that we still hear that there are big communication gaps, but I don't. But, but we, but we never actually met that initial objective of, of surveying, creating a strategy, having a plan, executing it, and then circling back to see to, to measure and course correct. And that that latter piece was so critical to know. Otherwise, to say to, to our community, oh, we're, we're great at communication now and we don't need to have a community to, to continue to address it. I think we hear from a lot of parents of a different opinion, but anyway, that's the last one. Wait, can I hang on? Oh, yeah. I, just, I just want to uh, follow up on what um, Ste Stephanie said. Um, I think Stephanie made some really valid points about the goals and maybe that group isn't whatever, but here's what I would concern. I think Chris is right, we still have these challenges, and so we just heard before about why you wanted to do some committees as subcommittee, and for the record, the reason I voted against that is I think that transportation and diversity actually should be full ad hoc committees. That's why I was opposed. I, I'm concerned about this subcommittee structure. But your, one of your arguments for it was that so it, uh, the infrastructure is in place, it can get up to going. So if we disband the communications uh, charter and committee, then we're starting from scratch again. So can I just, I would suggest that we keep the structure, but have some kind of meeting talking about communications, bring all the members in or anyone who's willing, Talk about this and see if we can figure out what are the new goals um, that should be for that committee. If we determine there aren't any and everything's fine, let's disband it. But I, I get the sense there are, so let's keep the structure in place.
figure out how to fix it and then let them move on with new group or whatever. No, I agree. I don't think that the issue is that there aren't any communication <laughs> issues. I think the issue is more that um, that the committee wasn't necessarily um, bringing forth solutions to some of those issues. So maybe um, maybe letting them figure out how to how to solve those problems might be prudent. Any other discussion on the floor? Yeah. Question. I think there are ways to improve communications without committees. For example, allowing people to come in and comment. Uh, make it easier. All right. So the motion on the floor is to disband the communication committee. Um, all those in favor of disbanding communications? Um, all those opposed to disbanding the communications committee? Uh, any abstain? Nobody abstain. Okay. Let it be communicated. <laughs> Um, we'll we'll keep the charter on file, and if if we see a need to put that committee back back in, we will. Um, athletic committee. I'll put the motion on the floor to disband the athletic committee. Um, is there a second? Yep. Yeah. I'll second that. Discussion. Yes. So um, it concerns me to have this discussion in this vote without uh, our athletic director present. <laughs> Um, who I would like to have weigh in. And I know that I've heard in past meetings a number of issues that this committee deals with that still are not resolved. So yet again, I know, I mean, look, we all agree we want less bureaucracy and fewer committees. And I'll less make it easy. On it. We all agree with that. Let's but move the table. Then it, you know. I'll I, move the table. Okay, I definitely, I think we should at least wait and have Eric weigh in. Thank you. Although Jeff Nichols actually chairs the committee. Post oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Is there a committee? <laughs> What would you like? Jeff chairs athletic? Yeah. They co-chair. They co-chair. Oh, okay. okay. Do you have a question for Mr. Nichols? I, I, well, what do you I think? think? Do you think the athletic it. committee needs to? Okay, there's a motion on the floor to uh, table disbanding the athletic committee. I'll second it. Any discussion on the table? I I'll just think, I just think that Eric should be here. The athletic director should be here, please. Okay. Um, all those in favor of tabling that decision? What is the hold on? Motion to table. Motion to table. The motion table. To table. How many? It's table. Oh, fine. It's gone. We, we, we can, can bring it up at the next meeting. Fair enough. All right. Um, any old bit thank you for that. Any old business? Uh, yeah. Uh, last Wednesday, Jennifer and I attended a meeting uh, at uh, Suffolk County's um, Department of Public uh, Works on shared services, and uh, I thought it was a, a fairly productive meeting. Um, getting kind of into the nitty gritty of the nuts and bolts of uh, shared services around uh, Suffolk County, um, the group is putting together a list of services that different municipalities are going to offer to other municipalities. This is a strictly volunteer program. Um, anything that, that the school district would be interested in participating in would have to be approved by this board and so we're seeing some interesting things on the list and um, that is uh, forming as we speak and also there's going to be another meeting a more local meeting um, next week on the on the 22nd excellent thank you that's great any other old business um, I, yeah, I had a couple questions one was, um, I know that we were, there was a discussion about inviting the PTA and PTSA representatives to give updates at upcoming board meetings. We used to have that for years. And um, so I didn't know if that was going to be initiated to reach out to those organizations. Um, the second was, um, can we put the, um, our contracts online? I just, you know, I, it would, it would, that would make it easier so that the public doesn't have to FOIL for contracts, whether it be, um, you know, our current employment contract is an example. It, it, it exists online on other websites, but most people wouldn't know that, so why not just put it on our own? It'd be the most transparent thing to do. Um, do you have a recommendation either way on that one? Um, it, you know, it depends on, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna defer that one to Jennifer, because you were a New York State Auditor. I have no problem with doing that. As she said, you can go on some websites and see every single contract on the website. Mm -hmm. um, other schools are not, do not have them on there. 
it really is a decision that you have to make, whether you want them or you don't want them. Mm -hmm. It is something else that we would have to make sure that we update. It is something else that we have to make sure that, you know, every, it's, it's going to be just a little more extra work. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Well, how do, they get, how do they get updated on the third party sites? Do those sites in depth? Well, see through New York would have the teacher's contract and they would have the superintendent's contract. All the other contracts aren't public anywhere. Like the MOAs so, aren't public? No, like you wouldn't see the custodian agreement anywhere outside of the district. You wouldn't yeah. see, um, you know, the TA contract. But all the other, but just the teachers and the superintendents, they all are online on C3 New York. But that's it. <laughs> There's no other contracts online. So it really is just something, you know, we could start doing. I know there is some work we have to do to our website. Um, we'll have to figure out where we want to place them on the website, and it would just be a little more work just making sure they were all up to date. And um, you know, the old ones changed out, the new ones got added on, that type of thing. And Jennifer, if I'm a member of the public and I wanted to see the custodial contract, I could FOIL, right? Yes, we have one form on the website. It's the FOIL uh, form. It's nice because we do keep track of all of the FOIL requests we get. Some of them. Um, I could come up with the information, or someone in the district come up with the information immediately. Other foils may take us a little longer to gather the information to get it out. But um, it really, you know, it's just every school they make their own decision about this. And our collective bargaining agreements, we're talking about seven, eight, um, we have one, two, three, four. We have six bargaining agreements, but the MOAs. I mean, they're specific to one employee, so I would have to see if they would be able to be put online, since they are specific and they're not union. They're not pertaining They'd to They'd have to union. be redacted, right? Yeah, those yeah, may have, have to be um, redacted a lot, um, mm -hmm. just because they may not completely all be public information. But you're talking, there's another, uh, probably like 20, 20 something MO, uh, MOAs. <laughs> so, so perhaps maybe the, 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 the two that are on C, you know, the, the C New York? C New York. C New York. I mean, that, that, that has to be shared anyway. And the other bargaining units, if there's six or six, but six, those are multi year, so it's not like every month you've got to post something. It's like every three years you're posting. Those wouldn't be, yeah, those wouldn't be so hard. The other right. ways that would be difficult. So, to uh, actually so, keep track of all of them. So, my suggestion <laughs> is to do it not for the MOAs, but for the rest. They're multi year, and, and, uh, so yeah. what, what I'm hearing from you, Chris, is it sounds like it's something that would require more work from the um, from the administration, so we'd have to get the will of the board. Mm -hmm. um, did, do you want to do that now? Yeah, the, and so we're talking about the superintendent and TASH contract is already done through another site. So that work you already do, correct? Yeah, that, that's already there. They, they foil them themselves and they place them online. Okay. So, so my suggestion is, and those are, these are all multi-year contracts, and so it's not like it's an enormous amount of work. It's posting seven documents or eight documents every three years. Um, so that my, so I'm putting on that, that those get put on because I feel like we should be. That's the most transparent thing to do. There's no reason why not share that. I, can I ask the benefit of hosting the Sag Harbor Secretarial Association's contracts on the website? What is the benefit? We have we have uh, community members that foil contracts, and this is just giving the information to everybody. I, I just I, I was I and, and this time I misunderstood your question because when you said contracts, then we do have every month we approve probably between a half dozen and sometimes two dozen contracts. Special education contracts, BOCES contracts. Yeah, I'm not talking about this. Uh, my suggestion was just the, 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 the large, the big rocks, as you would say. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, so I'm looking at a list of the big rocks. And, and I, again, I just, I, I don't really know but why we would um, wanna. I, I'm going to make a motion to table this um, because I think that it's an interesting idea and I think that I need to think about it and I think I need to read up on it a little bit more. So I'd like a little bit more time to. Think about how I want to vote on that one. So um, I'm going to make a motion. Thinking, okay. I've yeah. just been thinking about ways in which we mm -hmm. can be as transparent and share as much as possible. So I'm just no, going to say, I don't, I don't, it's not just transparency, um, it's actually for everybody here who's more supportive of better communication, it's more open 
Right. Yeah. Okay, well, we have a motion to table. I'll second that motion. Thank you. All those in favor of tabling that decision, tell another, uh, maybe the next board meeting or another night, I'll get it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, all those uh, opposed to tabling it? Abstain? Okay, thanks. Um, any other old business? Um, in terms of inviting community members to committees, what would the timing be on that? Because we don't want to wait too long. You know, we always try to get committees up earlier and earlier every year. We always start later than we want, and then we get to be back that we started too late and not accomplished enough. So we're already into the middle of August. Well, and we've uh, just approved the charters for right. this year and all their um, amendments, and so I'll ask Victoria to send an email out to the community to invite them out. And then in terms of... Can that include the subcommittee? Mm -hmm. And then how long, what, when would the deadline be? Would it be before the end of, before school starts? Or just so that when she sends out the invite, it's good to give a deadline so people know? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll You'll work all that yeah, out. Yep, we'll work all that out. You also yeah. send an um, e-blast out with all the new um, teachers that have been hired, introducing mm -hmm. them, and there is also a slide asking for committees and yeah. all the committees there are. So that's yeah. another chance for people to... Is that a separate email? That's a separate, so we'll send out an e-blast from it, it just in general, but that's also a... a this is one that people also will open because it, it gives them a chance to see every new teacher that's been hired and it's a welcome back message. So that we tend to get a really good response from that one. Any other old business? All right, let's move to public input two. Come on up. State your name for the record. <laughs> <laughs> know that you're being videotaped. Absolutely. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. Uh, communications. So tonight, the board asked themselves, what is the policy for um, physicals for sports? Um, what is the protocol for um, kids to be notified for practices? Um, there were several of them. So there's issues out there. But I agree with Stephanie. The, the, but that committee needs to be charged with what it has to do to be productive. And we were done in two meetings this year. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting the bus thing. I'm not getting the $200,000 in the buses. So if somebody could re-explain that to me, I don't get it. That's number one. And then number two, <coughs> the um, Spanish teacher. I was also confused when I saw that. So, and I think that you might have been confused because um, during the budget presentation, it was money to be allocated for funding the program. It didn't talk about another teacher. Communications, transparency. Just FYI, moving forward, we sat here and we said, as a board, do we have any additional staffing? Yeah. And it was custodians, secretaries, look at your slide presentation. It was that not in there, the email teacher. Okay. You can email that to me because I went through it today. I went through it today. I can, I, it today. I can too. I have it on my phone because like I took one. it. I remember Jeff telling me he needed that teacher. <laughs> okay, so it says to put money into a state mandated program. It didn't say teacher, but that we're just talking about maybe mess up misunderstanding. Yeah, we'll that's what's on the slide. Line. That's on the that is on the slide. So that being said, that is a highlight actually on the slide. So the bus thing, I don't get it. We have kids, we know they go to schools, we know we have to transport them. If you have one and you bring in another child, it's not going to increase your bus line. So if somebody could maybe re-explain that, that would be great. Or put it together and send it to me, that'd be awesome. Yeah, because um, I'm not getting it. My, my understanding is that we used to have some lag time in between runs where we could run shorter runs. And now that one start time has moved 15 minutes and the other's only moved five, some of that lag time between bus runs is no longer there. And so when these short little runs came in, those were runs we didn't know about, and now we don't have the wiggle room to. So it's because, so, but, but we're saying it's not because of time change. Well, the time change took away the wiggle room, the runs we didn't know about. So it's like a combo of the both. Like a run, 
I don't understand. Transportation is a big puzzle. <laughs> so what happened was, is back in March and April, we didn't know about those additional runs. So we did have some space in our schedule to kind of squeeze things out and try and get that AM run and that PM run without having to add additional costs. But because now we have all of these extenuating circumstances and these five additional items that entered into this puzzle, we're not going to be able to demand the PM runs. So right now, if, if, if things do not, if nothing changes from now to the start of school, we probably will have to contract out those PM runs. But things do change. I have, I have one item on there, it's homeless student transportation. That homeless student is, you know, still registered here, but who knows, it may change in September where we're not going to have to transport that homeless student. So that is a really conservative, conservative estimate of if we can't cover any of those PM runs of what it would cost. But like I said, we're still, it's fluid, we're still working on it, we're still seeing if things can be squeezed in. We don't think, it would never be more than that amount. Um, if anything, it would be less than that amount. But we're just putting it out there that that would be very, the most conservative based on if all of these extenuating circumstances continue into the school year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I'm not getting it. But okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still. I'm not. Sorry. Anybody else for public input too? <coughs> all right. Um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to. Um, Adjourn to an executive session to discuss the memorandum of agreements with the um, Sac Harbor District employees. Where's new business go? New business? Yeah. Um, you should bring it with me and I put it on the agenda. I, later? Another day? Sure. Do you, have some, do you have something you'd like to discuss? It usually is a list for I just want to say that the school, do you want me to, I can put on another Go one. Ahead. Go ahead. That I would like to see the school district investigate a paid position to hire someone to take care of our website, email, and social media communication and post and disseminate information in a timely fashion. Shouldn't that go to the communication? <laughs> no, actually, the communications actually, uh, committee will on. never get that done. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For the record, the first year the communication committee was in effect, they made a presentation to administration and the board. It was two pronged, and one of them was exactly that. So the first year it was in effect, it was very effective and did make a recommendation. There's a whole presentation on it that included that position. Okay. For the record. Um, okay. But, but um, Diana, you started the meeting saying that at the end of the meeting you'd circle bad about, about the Oh, yes. No, yes. I didn't, so, yep. Go ahead. Did you want to weigh in? Uh, yeah, I would in the fact that there are times when we will get a copy of a contract for us to vote on four days later without having spoken to an attorney mm -hmm. or having a conversation. And so I, I was not happy that we... We felt the need to go into exec session and have people outside, and then there's the pressure of, well, we better cut this short because we've got 50 people outside. And imagine if they were, you know, we had a lot more community members. So, the, you know, I'm uncomfortable voting on things without having an understanding of what I'm voting on, which is why you have exec sessions about things like contracts. You can't have it after you're asked to vote. Tonight it was set up that we were going to be at, we we're going to have our exec session after we're asked to vote on items that are comp that have confidential components. So even if it's a brief exec beforehand, otherwise I think we're going to be doing this at a lot of our meetings. And that and that's not that's not helpful to everybody else in the room. Okay, we'll let everybody weigh in. Go ahead. I I, I don't think starting off a meeting with an executive session is a great idea. And I think the way it went tonight was actually better and it allows the public to be like, okay, in and it's annoying they have to get in and out, but I think it allows for a little bit more transparency because they'll know when we're going in and when we're going out, they'll know exactly why. And instead of just on the agenda, having it say, oh, a proposed executive session. Um, but they're involved with what's going on. They know what we're talking about to begin with. So when we close to the executive session, I think they understand a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Well, we have. What? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll show. You. No, 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 no. Go no, ahead, Tommy no. John. Go ahead. I heard you first. Go ahead. Um, what other uh, schools? Some other schools have is um, uh, physically. Uh, what, what the board will do is is physically they would get up and they ah. would adjourn into another room and you all would get to stay and you know you, you wouldn't have to stand out in the hall. Which is which this school did so, used to hang, hang on, please don't interrupt. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, thank you. And um, 
I, I, I like the idea of going into executive session um, in the middle of the agenda if it is needed. Um, and of course, we, we need to see the contract before we to, to take a look at it. And we get a vote. If, you, if I don't like it, I can vote now. I think Alex is next. Go ahead. Oh, I, just, I, I like the idea of starting the public meeting first and or earlier, consecutive after, and I agree that that is, I think everyone has said, a good idea if we have to have that brief executive session in the middle, we should all leave and everyone else should get to stay. <laughs> yeah, what's in that room? Susan? Well, that is what this board used to do. This board used to get up and go and hit, and there were complaints about that. Yes. And in fact, the way that it was uh, changed to do it before was to make was for the convenience of everybody all around, the convenience of the public, so that there weren't disruptions, and the, and convenience and efficiency, uh, and fiduciary responsibility of board members. There were things. There were a lot of things on this agenda tonight that I wasn't comfortable with because. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity. There were things that were missing in the stuff that was sent to us. Then we didn't have an opportunity to ask questions that we should be able to ask questions that are confidential. So, you know, and then when I asked for for this session, the exec, you voted against it. So, I mean, you know, that, which in fairness, everybody on this board should be supporting when any board member has a concern about something because we should be supporting each other in that. So I don't think it's fair that we're asked to vote on things that we're uncomfortable about. I really appreciated getting my questions answered, having those explanations. That, in my opinion, should have all happened up front, and then we could have been going much more smoothly. You all want sh uh, shorter meetings. We all want more efficient meetings. That's a way to do it. it okay. This will lengthen the meeting. Let's hear from everybody first before we go around again. Stephanie? I feel bad. I must have missed the meeting. I must have been absent when you decided to put the executive session at the end. As right. president, I set the agenda and I decided to just do it. She uh, never good. asked for our opinion. Oh, good. That's even better. I like that. I, I am a get it done kind of gal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's terrific. I can't stand when it, the mystery says, and we will go into an executive session to talk about it or propose something or other. That just absolutely feeds in, what are they talking about? What's going on? This says, I did not understand the park board. I did not understand the distance learning. I need more answers. They knew it. I think we used the computer secret room over there, and I thought it was perfect. Um, I, I agree. I think it went really well. I, I don't mind having exec in the middle. Um, I think that what it does is it allows us to have more conversations in public. And though I agree we can have a lot of things answered ahead of time in exec, I don't think exec is the place to get those exactly. things quest those questions answered. I think most of the questions that I get from the board are actually appropriate for public. Um, very rarely are the questions that I'm getting about the agenda um, sensitive in nature. If, if it has to do with finance, that's public. If it has to do with creating a position or whether enrollment has dictated that we need to do this, that, or the other, or whether it was in the budget or any of those things, that, that's all questions that should be fleshed out here. And I feel like it makes for a more authentic conversation. And I feel like the, um, the public gets a, a sense for who we are and we don't just come out and just rubber stamp and say, because everything else has been decided ahead of time. So. I, I, I'm, I, I'm talking, I'm not allowed a second chance on all of that. <laughs> I, I would add, Susan, though, that if somebody wants to table something, that we become supportive and liberal in doing so. Unless it's so time sensitive, as the park board was, because the kids start playing there on Monday, that I publicly say, hang on. Let's go into exec, get your answer now, but maybe we can table what bothers people. Because you're right, you shouldn't vote on something you don't know. But they could probably just keep us moving. Well, and, and the, the board receives their agenda on Wednesday, and I'll back up documentation on, on Friday. So if, if we can look at it and let me know if there's things on the agenda that you have questions about. I think that's the point of getting it out to the board early. The, ch the challenge we have with getting, as a society, with getting the backup documentation on Friday is that means on Friday night, if I have no life, or Saturday or Sunday, I got to get it to you Monday we're meeting and some of us when we're working during the day can't keep checking our email to see if we got an answer to vote on something. So you're not leaving, we're not leaving time to review the backup because a lot of the questions come from the backup that you don't understand. 
Um, and secondly, when it comes to contracts that we've never had a discussion about before, I'm nervous about doing it without having the opportunity sometimes to access our attorney. So my caveat in, in, in your request for changing the process is, if we're dealing with contracts that we've not really had a discussion, that we, there should be an opportunity where we can ask things of the attorney um, about, co about contracts. And like there was an example, we did not have that opportunity. And maybe I should have tabled something. But, but, we, have, but we, have to be, we have to do our due diligence when it comes to right. things like contracts. And I felt like tonight we shortcutted that process, absolutely. Right. And there's times where we're not getting all the backup documents. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like some board members are getting information that others are not. Yeah. And so that's part of the problem. No, here. we should post, I feel like post it all in the Google drive. Docs. It's in the well, drive. It's, I, I, there was, that's why I said earlier there was a document that I couldn't find. The gold so, have it you know. right here. It's, it's it sometimes they throw them off order. I wish. Yeah, hang, I can, yeah. hang on. Um, a, a couple of board members have now weighed in twice. Is there anybody else that would like to weigh in twice? I just want to say that doing the executive session and the middle of the meeting I think helps us stay on the point and get to the nitty-gritty of what is the confidential matter and it doesn't allow us to meander around uh, other things and I know you said it felt like it was too much pressure but I think that's actually a good thing and you have any right to table or to mm -hmm. To, to a contract or anything else that you want. It does mean that the administrators and public will be waiting outside, and if we needed an hour to hash something, they're standing outside for an hour, where they wouldn't have had to before. But if you're comfortable with that, okay. that's that's the way you vote. Um, well, with that being said, I would like to make a motion to convene to. Ex oh, go ahead. I, I, oh, I you do, got your choice. I do agree go with that, but I think, it's, I think it's important. Thank you. I think it's important to say that uh, there are there will be times when we need to have dedicated executive sessions. We do mm -hmm. negotiate contracts. And we do have, you know, there are eight specific reasons. New York State um, states that the meeting of the public has to be done in private. So I want the public to know that there, you know, we are going to schedule uh, executive sessions and have right. them. Right, right, and we won't have the public sitting outside. Right. Like, like now, we're going to let them go. Right, and I don't like the whole thing either. That's why I was. No, <laughs> I think we should use that room. Yeah. All right. Um, can I get a motion to um, convene to executive session to discuss the MLAs? Mm -hmm. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are going into exit.